fruits. They proudly carry legacy dairy milk produced right in their hometown of Highsville. Find your favorite national brands. Download the Phillips IGA app to start saving. View their weekly sales ad or simply shop online. Phillips IGA and Butcher Shop. Friendly faces and fair prices. Located on Highway 70 in Highsville. Kentucky Farm Bureau agents wear a lot of hats. They're coaches. Volunteers. Church members. Neighbors. Someone who's there when you need them. Especially when you need them most. That may be a lot of hats but they're all the perfect fit. Kentucky Farm Bureau, big on commitment. Hey son, what you doing? Daddy, I'm going on a dealership ship one day. All right, I'll dream with you. From one small dream to over 25 dealerships in the state of Kentucky, we have set out to provide Kentuckians with reliable vehicles and the best customer service for over 50 years. This may have started with a simple dream, but our dedication to our customers will go on for generations. Are you looking for a new career where you'll be a part of a family-owned business for over 50 years? Walbert Trucking is a trucking company based right here in Glasgow. With Walbert Trucking, you'll get full benefits, great pay, and 401k. And you'll be home daily. Unlimited possibilities await you. Apply today and become a member of the Walbert Trucking Team. 106 Sean Lane in Glasgow. 651-6784. Here to Hank Roy Stadium on the Don Franklin Auto Countdown to Kickoff Show. Joe Myers, now joined by Glasgow Head Coach Jeff Garman. To discuss uh, tonight's big matchup with the Barron County Trojans and the uh, first meeting between these two schools, Jeff, in football since 2016. Uh, how did it happen that this was the year it all worked out to get this game back on the schedule? Well, I mean, the two coaches just talked and, and athletic directors and decided that it was time that we started playing again. Um it's not only a great game for both programs, Jeff, in terms of money. Obviously, it's a big money game, ticket sales for that kind of thing uh, for both schools whenever they host it. But I think this is a big game for the community, too. Would you agree with that? Well, it is. And, and you know, f- as far as Glasgow goes, we tried to tie the bowl games together and the regular season games together, and that didn't work out. But uh, they're getting one game where everybody's together at the same place. So uh, I guess that's better than nothing. Have you been uh, practicing this week, been pleased with how they've been going in practice? No, practice has gone good all season. I mean, uh, kids have come out and, and uh, they they in try to try. Our motto is, you know, work every day, try to get better, and we're trying to improve upon ourselves. We watch the film each Monday. We show the mistakes that were made from the week before, and that's what we're trying to correct. Uh, the defense, again, was dominant last week against Allen County Scottsville. Uh, the Patriots had just 12 yards rushing in that game. So now in the season, Jeff, your defense has only given up about 45 yards per game rushing. What's been so good specifically about that part of your defense? Well, our kids are just, for some reason this year, it just seems like they're just locked in a little bit more on the defensive side of the ball. And, and, and they're really paying attention to some detail. And 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 they're just doing an outstanding job. I mean, you got to give players credit when they deserve credit. And when you only give up 45, 50 yards a game rushing, you, you, you deserve credit. And that's where I give it. One of those defensive players who deserves credit, uh, Jeff, certainly, and a kid who probably we don't talk about enough is a kid by the name of Jacob Brunson. Jacob, uh, as we said, uh, has, has not been talked about a lot, at least by us on the radio, but he's second on your team in tackles. Uh, what do you like most about the way Jacob's been playing? You know, Jace, Jacob's overcome a, a, a devastating knee injury last year. So, I mean, he had a long, hard winter of rehab. Uh, Jacob is smart. uh you know, our defense by design, him and Mason should be leading us in tackles by design, and and, and they're both doing that, and, and they're both playing well. Uh, they're, they're smart. Him and Mason both are, are, are very intelligent players, uh, and that's where the detail comes in. Uh, but you know, he, he's a he just continues to get better each week, and and that's what you're hoping for. Your offense 
threw for over 300 yards last week, Jeff. Obviously, Easton Jesse's been playing great at quarterback. He has 12 touchdowns, no interceptions. But I thought last week really displayed the amount of weapons he has at wide receiver. Five different uh, players uh, caught a pass from Easton, and then another player caught a pass from Hudson Gum. So six different receivers caught a pass last week. A lot of weapons in the passing game for you guys. Well, and that's by design. I mean, we, 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 again, we have good players. And you, in this system that we're running, you're trying to get everyone involved. And, and you know, I'm sure if you went and talked to each of those kids individually, they'd like to get a few more balls. They'd like to carry the ball a few more times. Uh, but uh, they have to just accept what the defense gives. And, and what the defense gives is, is where we're going to distribute the ball and, uh, you know, some weeks is going to be more than others. But there's no doubt Easton is the – he's the figurehead to all this. And, and, and how he plays is, is a lot to do with how our offense is going to roll. Uh, Wesley Travis, Jeff, he has been outstanding this year, kicking the football five of five last week on point after touchdowns attempts. Uh, he's now 18 of 19 on the season. He's really proven himself to be a very reliable kicker, hasn't he? He has, and you know this is his, you know, the, his senior year, and and uh, he's shown a lot more maturity in his work and and how he goes about his business, and uh, and I think it shows out there on the field on Friday night. Barron County coming off their first loss of the season at Monroe County. Just kind of what are your overall thoughts on the Barron County football team, Jeff? Oh, they're a good football team. They've got a what I think they're three and one. They've got a good record, and uh, uh, they've beat some good teams along the way. Uh, you know, if you when you beat Warren East and you beat Trick Count, those are those are good wins, and uh, so they're a good football team. Uh, we'll have to be prepared. They've got good players. They got good coaches. Uh, you know, they're a six A school. They're playing a six A schedule. Uh, I think a five A school. So uh, you know, our, we'll have our work cut out for us. I know you always preach, hey, it's just the next game. But is there any any fear or concern, I guess a better word, on your part about your kids being too overhyped to start this ball? I, I, I fear that every week. I, I mean, is, is there going to be a game where we come in there and, and don't show up and, and, and on mentally and physically? Uh, but, you know, I just have to trust our guys. We've, we've got a lot of senior players and uh, – and they understand what this means to not only me, but in this school, in this community that, you know, they, they are, people expect our football team to play well. And, and uh, that's, a, that's a big burden to carry sometimes. Uh, but, uh, you know, these guys have shown up every day and, and, and they've done an outstanding job. Um, they're a pretty balanced offense uh, over at Barron County, Jeff. 150 rushing yards a game, 137 passing yards a game. Is there one of those two aspects which concerns you most as you try to prepare your defense? We're going to do what we always do. We're going to try to stop the run, and then we're going to try to get them one-dimensional, and then we can start doing some things and and pressuring the quarterback the way we'd like to. And uh, But that's our philosophy. That's, that's how we're going to play. Talk about pressuring the quarterback. Their quarterback is Tate Spielman. He is the center of that offense. He leads the team in rushing at 265 yards on the season, has seven rushing touchdowns, completing 70% of his passes for 545 yards, uh, one touchdown, two interceptions. Your defense last week did a great job of containing a mobile quarterback at Allen County, Scottsville. How do you do that again this week? Uh, you know, very similar plan. Uh, you just you, – it's paying attention to detail, knowing who their weapons are, how they're going to try to attack you, how they're going to beat you, and then it's putting hats on him. And and, and the thing is, if they want to run him a lot, I mean, and and, and that's their leading rusher, uh, we just got to make sure we get plenty of people to the ball, we tackle him hard. And, and it, you know, you do that over a course of a game that wears you down. I think that also affects you in your passing game as it goes along. And, uh, you know, that that's that's something, you know, we've played – the LaRue County had a running quarterback that liked to throw. Uh, Allen had a running quarterback. That's kind of been what we faced. Russellville, running quarterback, liked to throw. So, I mean, he, this is a good athlete. Uh, uh, number five, he, he he's a really good player. So, you know, we have to know where he's at at all times. As far as their defense is concerned, Jeff, anything that stands out about what they do on the defensive side? Hey, they seem to fly around to the ball, and, and they're aggressive. They're going to blitz their linebackers and, and try to make plays. And uh, we just got to be ready for, uh, you know, whatever they give us. They're going to have to give us something. And, and when they give us something, we just got to be able to take advantage of it. Other than Davey Williams continuing to deal with his injury, Jeff, anybody else out for this ballgame tonight? No, everybody's good to go. 
Good luck tonight against the Trojans. Thank you. Scotty head coach Jeff Garman. And uh, when we come back, we will give you the starting lineups for both Glasgow and Barron County. And Larry Alexander and Brewster B. will join us as well as we continue here on the Don Franklin Auto Countdown to Kickoff Show. We're back after a three-minute timeout on WCOD Sports. Hardy's two for five dollar breakfast bake goodness into your morning. Choose a biscuit with sausage and egg, biscuit and gravy, or a country fried steak biscuit. Any two, just five dollars. Hardy's goodness in the making. Get exclusive offers on the Hardy's app. We're not superheroes, but when people need us, we answer the call. We're not weathermen, but we know the Kentucky seasons like the back of our hands. For over forty years, we've serviced any brand, any time with a same-day service guarantee. Now that's a big promise, and that's probably why no one else does it. So when dealing with your heating and cooling, call HVAC Services, and you'll have the right team by your side. When you come into Garcia's Grill, you're welcomed with a smile and you'll love the atmosphere. Garcia's was voted by the community as the best overall restaurant for the past two years. Great food at a great value. They serve fresh, delicious, traditional Mexican dishes, incredible pasta, burgers, steaks, and seafood. People say you can never get burnt out on this restaurant because of all the amazing choices. Garcia's Grill, owned and operated by the Gomez Garcia family. Check them out on North Ray Street in Glasgow and on Facebook. Garcia's Grill, a different kind of Mexican restaurant. The South Central Bank has been investing in the Glasgow community for over 50 years. During that time, we've learned a thing or two about hard work, relationships, and a vision for success. South Central Bank is designed to make a difference in the prosperity of our customers and the communities it serves. We want to be a part of your success. Visit SouthCentralBank.com. South Central Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. With a history of scoring touchdowns and breaking records, Dakota Elmore knows a thing or two about hard work. At Elmore Realty and Auction, his team, often referred to as the A-Team, applies that same work ethic in how they serve this community. With a combined 200 years of experience, the team serves our commercial industry, helps families find their dream home, and makes your auction an easy, profitable, and positive experience. Elmore Realty and Auction, trusted since 1935. Check them out on Facebook for listings and auctions. Want to slash your cable bill? Save over $20 a month with MyStream TV from SCRTC, the savings alternative with the same great channel lineup you've always been accustomed to. Packages as low as $85 even include internet, at least 200 meg. This is a no-brainer. No more cable boxes, just an app. And you even get an extra stream. Wait till we show you catch-up TV. Compare your current service to the new MyStream TV from SCRTC, 678-2111. Call and save today. There's a new flavor in Hardy's Craft Kitchen. Nashville hot chicken. Juicy, 100% white meat dipped in buttermilk, hand-breaded and seasoned to bring the heat. Breakfast, lunch, or dinner? New Nashville hot is goodness in the making. Welcome back here to Hank Roy Stadium here on the campus of Glasgow High School. Joe Myers, Larry Alexander, Bruce Tribune along with you here on the Don Franklin Auto Countdown to Kickoff Show. Let's introduce you to the starting lineups for Glasgow and Barron County. The lineups tonight brought to you by TJ Regional Health. First, for the visiting Barron County Trojans, starting at left tackle, it'll be Riley DeGroft. He's a 5'10", 2'10", senior. Left guard, Ryan Harrison, a 5'10", 280 junior. At center, Alex Sawyer, a 5'10", 300-pound junior. The right guard, Chris DeVore, a 6'2", 205 senior. At right tackle, Charlie Poland, a 6'1", 240 junior. The wide receivers are Bray Bewley, a 6'1", 150 junior. Jackson Bird, a 6'2", 175 sophomore. And Dalton Garman, a 6'1", 170 sophomore. Running backs are Cash Moore, a 5'10", 180 senior. And Austin Sewell, a 5'8", 170 senior. And the quarterback, Tate Spillman, a 6'1", 170 junior. Defensively for Barron County. At the tackle spots, you'll see Ryan Harrison and also Brian Wilson. Wilson's a 5'8", 190 junior. The defensive ends are Brooks Browning, a 6'2", 220 senior, and Colton Thomas, a 5'8", 170 junior. Linebackers, Braxton Carnes, a 5'9", 176 sophomore. Tristan Muse, a 5'9", 175 sophomore. And the linebacker, the third linebacker, I should say, is Waylon Clemens, a 6'155 junior. Cornerbacks are Bray Bewley, a 6'138 junior, and Dakota Wade, a 5'8", 155 junior. The safeties are Dalton Garman and Tate Spillman. 
Head coach for Berrien County is Tommy Muse. He's in his third season with the Trojans with an overall record of 10 wins and 16 losses. Berrien County assistant coaches are Jason Esters, Chris Childress, Victor Coleman, Jacob London, Ty McMurtry, Brent Spillman, Justin Vessels, Justin Browning, Todd Stevens, Chad Eaton, and Gavin Withrow. For the Scotties on offense, starting at left tackle, it'll be Ryan Randall, a six foot 278 senior. Left guard is Rad Gentry, a 5'9", 232 senior. At center for the Scotties, Luke Simmons, a 6'5", 286 senior. At right guard, Frankie Cianci, a 6'2", 247 senior. The right tackle, Cam Johnson, 6'3", 273 and a senior. The wide outs are Jarek Martin, a 6'4", 170 sophomore. Rico Crowder, a 6'3", 185 senior. Cameron Bull, a 6'1", 167 sophomore. And Dalen Thomas, a 6'2", 200 pound sophomore. Running back for the Scotties is Gavin Neal, a 5'9", 180 senior. And the quarterback, Easton Jesse, a 6'1", 190 junior. Defensively for Glasgow, the tackles are Frankie Cianci and Cam Johnson. Defensive ends are David Dell, a 6'3", 240 senior. And Cash Wells, a 6'3", 201 senior. At linebacker, Mason Arms, a 5'9", 195 senior. Jacob Brunson, a 5'8", 171 senior. And Max Lee, a 6'1", 201 junior. Cornerbacks are Jarek Martin. And Ryan Morgan, Ryan's a 5'9", 132 senior. Strong safety, Kellen Stone, a 5'9", 152 junior. And at free safety, Dalen Thomas. Head coach for the Scotties is Jeff Garman. Jeff's in his ninth season with Glasgow with an overall record of 74 wins and 27 losses. Glasgow assistant coaches are John Meyer, Stephen Buford, Blaze Talicki, Tyler Hughes, Cameron Garman, Randall Parmley, Kevin Estes, Jeff Ritchie, Desi Austin, and Peyton Gibbons. And once again, those starting lineups tonight brought to you by TJ regional health and as we continue here on the Don Franklin Auto Countdown to Kickoff show we now bring Larry Alexander and Bruce Debut along in here in our pregame coverage and uh, Larry the, the resumption of this series I feel like at least is long overdue but it's good to finally have these two teams playing football again against each other. Well it's always <clears throat> it's a big rivalry of course and it's a, a big 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 money game you can tell with this crowd we've got here tonight and uh, yeah it's, a, it's probably long overdue uh, I don't, really don't understand why it was stopped to start with, but that's another that's another arguing point. That, but it, the thing about it is, it's back, and uh, we're we're probably going to be playing from now on. And uh, Bruce Larry just brought it up. That this is a huge money game for both programs. Uh, when each team get obviously the home team keeps the gate, it's going to be a big big money game for Glasgow next year. It'll be a big money game for Barron County. Uh, not only that, but I mean you're also talking about it's a big night for the community. Huge crowd here tonight. This will be by far the biggest crowd the Scotties will have uh, all year long, most likely. We'll see how far they get in the playoffs. Some of those games might draw some large crowds as well. But it's just a good night for the community in the spirit of competition, I think. It is. And, you know, we talked about it. That, you know, because of the way other sports are, we play in every other sport except football. So there was no reason not. It's just natural. I mean, the thing about it is the expense. It, it, you know, it's a short trip. You don't spend a lot of money and, and things like that. And, and just the excitement. Of, you know, you've heard a lot of people talk about it this week, all week long. Larry, both teams, I'm sure, will be fired up to play this game. It'll be a big key uh, to, to come out and not be too hyped up as you start this ball game. That, right? that was going to be one of my keys right there. Is you don't want to get too high emotionally. Uh, if you do, you, you start playing fast and you start thinking too fast and you start making mistakes, and you don't want to do that. You want everybody to be ready to play, but you just don't want to be overly, overly hyped up for it. Uh, Bruce, the Scotties may be coming off their best performance of the season last week at Allen County, Scottsville. They won 43-7, to put a running clock on ACS. The offense put up 445 total yards, 316 of which came through the air. The defense forced two turnovers and held Allen County, Scottsville to 12 rushing yards. It's an outstanding performance. Well, and, and Coach Garman touched on this. We've talked about it. The defense has been the key for this ball club. Uh, they've played very good defense. Uh, you know, I think you commented last week the varsity only gave up that one touchdown last week, and that's the only uh, touchdown the varsity had given up. And uh, and it does, uh, you know, they've been able to get good field position for our offense. But uh, as you say, I I've told people, we've got two or three, four kids, and any time they touch the football, they can take it to distance. One of those kids, of course, is Rico Crowder, and then you got Jarek Martin as well. And then last week, Larry, Lucas Christian had a 61-yard touchdown reception. Uh, lots of weapons in the passing game for the Scotties. We do, and uh, since they've gone to the, the spread offense, well, they're mixing it up. Of course, the spread offense is where they're getting all the big plays uh, from scrimmage. And uh, so far, 
the rushing attack has been uh, by committee, and of course, you, you see the both quarterbacks tonight are the leading rushers on both teams. So uh, we don't have that one really big outstanding rusher like we've had in the past, but we get it done for three or four or five people. Uh, the passing game, you get it to Rico, you get it to Jarek Martin, you get it to Bull. You're, they're, they're capable of taking it to the distance, as Bruce said. And Rico Crowder is number three in the state overall, regardless of class in yards per catch at 27.5 yards per catch. And uh, Bruce Glasgow has the fourth best passing attack in 3A, the 24th best rushing attack. I would challenge you to find the last time Glasgow was ranked that much higher in passing than in rushing. Well, we've usually been very balanced. And, and, and of course, Coach Garman is taking what people are giving. That's right. Uh, and, and we knew coming in, I mean, we can talk about it now. We, we, we can run the, the wing tee or something. We can go to a different offense where we just run it every play if we have to. We've got the personnel that can do that. But what's been given is what we're taking, and, that, and that's what you've got to do. Well, let's go ahead and uh, get set here to wrap up the Don Franklin Auto Countdown to Kickoff show. And then uh, when we come back, we will take a look at Larry's keys to the victory for the Scotties. We'll also tell you about the series record between Glasgow and uh, Barron County. Uh, and uh, some more pregame coverage uh, for coming uh, a little bit after the break, but we'll go ahead and actually wrap up the Don Franklin portion of our pregame coverage. And then uh, we are about uh, six and a half, seven minutes away from kickoff here from Hank Roy Stadium. So let's uh, go ahead and, as we said, wrap up the Don Franklin Auto Countdown to Kickoff show. And uh, when we come back, we'll get into Larry's Keys. We'll get into the uh, uh, series record. And we'll also uh, have kickoff for you. And the coin toss, obviously, as well. That'll be brought to you by Walbert Trucking. We're back after a three-minute timeout here on WCLU Sports. This has been the Don Franklin Auto Scotty's Football Pregame Show. The opening kickoff is just minutes away on WCLU. Have you injured yourself playing a sport or exercising? Sports medicine experts at TJ Regional Health are trained to get you back on the road to recovery. Whether you're dealing with sprains, fractures, knee and shoulder injuries, or other common injuries, our goal is to prevent illness and injury in active individuals of all ages and help prevent future problems to maximize your performance. Find out more at tjregionalhealth.org slash rehab. Patients first, team always. TJ Rehabilitation Services. Monticello Bank first opened its doors in 1895 as a single office in Monticello, Kentucky. Today, there are 21 NBC locations across the Commonwealth. From home loans to commercial lending, Monticello Bank offers a wide variety of convenient financial services and competitive rates from local people you know and trust. Visit them at 1434 Happy Valley Road in Glasgow and let them help make the financial side of your life a little easier. Monticello Bank, where people matter. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. We know there's a big difference between being in a community and being part of the community. That's why here in Glasgow, we cheer on the Scotties. We work hard every day to make a positive impact on the community we call home. Behind our golden arches, we strive daily to serve delicious food and treats. If you could only smell this McDonald's ad, you smell how delicious this burger and fries really are. Join our McTeam. To learn how, text KY209 to 38000. Benefits include a sign-on bonus up to $500. Phillips IGA, a family market since 1960. Visit the butcher shop where you'll find fresh cuts of fine meats from an in-store butcher and delicious hamburger ground fresh, plus a fresh selection of garden vegetables and fruits. They proudly carry legacy dairy milk produced right in their hometown of Highsville. Find your favorite national brands. Download the Phillips IGA app to start saving. View their weekly sales ad or simply shop online. Phillips IGA and Butcher Shop. Friendly faces and fair prices. Located on Highway 70 in Highsville. Glasgow Scotty's Football on WCLU 103.1 FM and AM 1490. And video streaming free at WCLURadio.com and on the Glasgow Scotties and WCLU YouTube channels. Glasgow Scotty's Football, brought to you by Don Franklin Auto, Walbert Trucking, South Central Bank, HVAC Services, South Central Rural Telecommunications Cooperative, Garcia's Grill, Elmore Realty and Auction, Hardee's, TJ Regional Health, McDonald's, Monticello Bank, Phillips IGA, and Kentucky Farm Bureau agent Joe Myers. Play time's over, boy. Somebody got to be the victim tonight. Go! Go! It's time to play game day. Let's get the game on. (laughs) 
Joe Myers, Larry Alexander, Bruce Tribune back here with you at Glasgow's Hank Roy Stadium as we get you set for Glasgow and Barron County here tonight. First time these two teams have met since 2016. Our captains uh, are about to meet at midfield for the coin toss. And uh, got uh, some special guests joining uh, the captains here tonight. I think some administration, administrators from the two schools are out there. And I think maybe uh, Mayor Henry Royce and I think maybe Jamie Bewley. Jamie Bewley Bird out there as well, the Barron County Judge Executive. And we'll listen in to our coin toss here with Hilton Isabel, our lead referee tonight. Hopefully. He's in amongst a crowd of, uh, he's in amongst all the middle, he's in a big huddle of the captains, and I think, Here's this there we go. of the Mid-South Conference. Let's see there's tail. Our signal is being blocked, I think, by all the folks that he that are surrounding him, so we do apologize for that, but we'll keep an eye on it for you. And, of course, for those of you watching on YouTube, you can see what's going on there. you got a good view of it there. Again, you can watch this game live on YouTube on the Scotty channel or at WCOU as well. This coin toss tonight is brought to you by Walbert Trucking. So it looks like Barrett won the toss, and they have elected to receive. First one we've lost all year, isn't it? It is, yeah. Don't, not sure what was going on there, but uh, hopefully it'll work throughout the game. All right, Larry, what about the keys for a Glasgow victory here tonight? Well, Joe, I think uh, offensively, of course, you gotta you gotta play a clean ball game. You can't give, you can't turn the football over and give it to them in short fields and let them take advantage of it. Uh, offensively, we have to get the ball to our guys that can make plays, and that would be Rico Crowder and and Bunch, and uh, just don't get too high emotionally. We, we came off the field right there and they're jumping up and down. <laughs> Hope it's just not not too hyped up for that. And defensively, we have to control the quarterback. He is their main weapon. Keep him in front of you. Make him pass it. Don't let him run. And the series record between Glasgow and Barron County, Larry? This will be the 35th meeting between these two coups. The series stands 27-7 to in favor of Glasgow. First game came back in 1977 when the Scotties won that one 14-10 here at Glasgow. The last one was in 216 when the Scotties won that one by a score of 49 to 12. Barron's first win came in 1979 when they beat the Scotties 10 to eight here at Glasgow, but Glasgow has won the last two meetings between these schools. While we have a second, let me quickly announce that uh, we are looking for a little help here at WCLU. As uh, I've been asked to announce that uh, we are looking for some reliable folks to be board operators and camera operators. And if you will please email Kirk at woohoo107.com. That's K-I-R-K at W-U-H-U-107.com. Uh, that will uh, give you an opportunity to take a look uh, and see maybe if uh, you can be a part of the team here at WCLU as a board operator or a camera operator for our YouTube feed. Again, please email Kirk at woohoo107.com if you're interested. And the kick taken here by Barron County. Across the 20, 25, up to the 26-yard line, and that is where the Trojans will start maybe the 27. Rico Crowder on that first tackle on the kickoff, 6'3", 185, senior for the Scotties. So Tate Spillman, the uh, junior quarterback for Barron County, leads this team 265 yards rushing and three touchdowns on the season. He's also completes 70% of his passes for 545 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. He's a very mobile quarterback. Scotties have to keep him contained in the pocket. Spillman sets up in shotgun formation. He's got two receivers to the left, one man wide to the right. He's got a back to his left. That's Sewell in the backfield with him. It'll swing pass to Sewell, and he'll make the catch and looking to get back to the line of scrimmage. He does and maybe gets a yard, not much more than that. Guard number 18, Kellen Stone on that tackle. His first of the night, 5'9", 152, Junior. It will be a pickup of one on that uh, play from that pass from uh, Spillman to Sewell. Second down and nine for Barron County at their own 28-yard line. Spillman in shotgun. Sewell to his right this time with twin wideouts each way. 
Four down linemen for the Scotties. Here's the snap. Spillman again going to swing it to Sewell out of the backfield. Finds a little lane this time. He's across the 30, up near the 35-yard line. Let's see. They're going to spot him, I think, at the 34 instead of the 35. Max Lee on that tackle. His first tonight, 6'1", 201 junior. So that'll bring up third down and three after a pickup of six yards right there. Yeah, two little swing passes to start things off with here. One little pitch out and the other swing pass. Three receivers wide to the left side. The back to the left to Spillman. That's Sewell again. Spillman rolling out to the left. It's a shovel pass, and it will be a first down for Barron County as the receiver of that pass going to get to the 42-yard line. That's Jackson Bird who made the catch on that shovel pass, and it will be a Barron County first down to the 42. Jack, Jacob Brunson on the tackle, his first 5'8", 171 senior. A nice little play, just a little pitch. Uh, see the pros run that a lot. 10.25 to go in the opening quarter. First drive of the game for either ball club here, so nobody on the board yet. Trips to the near side. Sewell lines up to the right. Now he'll motion out of the backfield to the left side. Spielman alone in the backfield now in shotgun formation and a whistle at the snap. Timeout, Glasgow. We have a timeout taken by the Scotties here, so we'll go ahead and take our first break of the ball game. 10-11 to go in the opening quarter. We're scoreless between Glasgow and Barron County. Back after a 30-second timeout on WCLU Sports. Kentucky Farm Bureau agents wear a lot of hats. They're coaches, volunteers, church members, neighbors, someone who's there when you need them, especially when you need them most. That may be a lot of hats, but they're all the perfect fit. Kentucky Farm Bureau, big on commitment. Joe Myers, Larry Alexander, Bruce Tribune back here with you at Glasgow High School. It is first and 10 for the Barron County Trojans. They're at their own 42 with 10-11 to go in the opening quarter. Spielman in shotgun, fakes to Sewell, going to keep it around the right side, and he's going to maybe get back to the line of scrimmage, nothing more than that. Yeah, David Dale right there to meet him, 6'3", 240, senior. He got nowhere on that one. No gain on the play. It will be second down and 10. As I said, Spillman is Barron County's leading rusher on the year from the quarterback position, just like Easton Jesse is for the Scotty. Spillman has rushed so far for 265 yards coming into this ball game. Three receivers to the right side of the formation. Tight end on the left. Sewell going to motion out of the backfield to the left side. Spillman alone in the backfield now. Shotgun formation. Spillman to throw. Looking over the middle, man wide, wide open and caught at the 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, five and into the end zone. Scotty's blew well a coverage asleep. right there and it's a touchdown for the Trojans. They did, somebody fell asleep there. The safeties were drawn way up and uh, was it Bird that caught it? Number two. It was Jackson Bird on the catch, Larry. Well, he was wide open. <laughs> Nobody ran him. It was just a question whether he was going to catch it or not. He bobbled it just a little, but he caught it. And now Hadley Adams on for the extra point. And, yes, Hadley is a female. If you're watching on YouTube, you may see her ponytail sticking out of the back of her helmet. She is 11 of 13 this year on her PAT, so she's been a very accurate kicker for the Trojans. Snap is a little high, but they get it down. The kick is up, and the kick is good. So the Trojans strike first here, a 7 to nothing lead for Barron County, 9-19 to go in the opening quarter. Scotty's will have the football for the first time after a short break here. We'll give you this uh, drive for Barron County as Bruce is adding up all the numbers right now. And we were talking about uh, Hadley Adams there, the kicker for Barron County. If you're watching on our YouTube feed, you see the graphic up there that tells you what her stats are. Sort of unique. Of course, actually, it's the second time the Scotties have faced a female kicker this year. Russellville also had a, a female kicker, so it's, it's certainly not unheard of these days, but still obviously quite unusual, but it's uh, certainly good to see the ladies getting involved as well. That drive for Barron County, six plays, 73 yards, and a... Touchdown pass. What, Bruce? 
Bruce says five plays instead of six. So a five-play 73-yard drive, 2.41 off the clock. 58-yard touchdown pass from Spillman to Bird, and Hadley Adams adds that extra point. Seven nothing Trojans. Well, that's not the way, uh, not the way the Scotties wanted to start this ball game. That's for sure. Somebody blew coverage in the secondary, and and uh, we're, we're getting. Adams to kick it away. Bull and Crowder back deep for the Scotties. It's a squib kick and takes a high hop. Will be fielded by Bull at the 22. He's across the 25. The 30 comes to the near sideline and will be shoved out of bounds right around the 35-yard line. Right, number 22, Jackson Reese on that tackle. He is a junior, 5'10", 175. That touchdown for Barron County, by the way, only the second touchdown the Scotty Varsity defense has given up all year long. Glasgow's defense is number two in the entire state, regardless of class and points given up coming into this game at 3.3 points per contest. So they've been very solid on the defensive side. Here's Easton Jesse. He'll set up in shotgun formation. Gavin Neal to his right. You have twin wideouts to each side. Four-man front for Barron County. Dalen Thomas goes in motion to the right side. Here's the snap. Jesse looking to throw on first down. Jesse looking down the left sideline for Jarek Martin. It is going to be just overthrown. Jarek made a nice diving attempt for it down near the 30-yard line, but just could not quite haul it in. Boy, that ball was just about a yard overthrown is all it was. It's back a yard. He got it, and maybe he goes a distance. He had double coverage there. Stop the clock with 9.06 to go in the first quarter. Barron County on top, 7-zip. Yeah, both touchdowns that's been scored on the Scotty defense have been both busted coverage in the secondary. And big, long touchdown passes. Two wide outs each way. Jesse in shotgun again, kneel to his left this time. Rico Crowder goes in motion. They're going to give it up the middle instead to Gavin Neal, and Gavin going to get a couple of yards, maybe three. It'll be third and long for the Scotties. Braxton Carnes on that uh, tackle. He's a sophomore, 5'9", 176. It is a gain of three to the 38-yard line, so third down and seven coming up here. Gigantic crowd on hand here at Hank Roy Stadium. They, are, they have filled the stands. It's also a solid line of people all the way along the fence as you look down on the opposite sideline. Jesse in shotgun, Neal to his left, two wide outs each way. Third and seven, Jesse to throw. Good protection, looks up in the middle, a pass going to be incomplete. It was intended for Jarek Martin, but thrown way behind him that time, and <laughs> Jarek had no chance to make that catch. And It'll be fourth and seven, and the Scotty punting team will come in. Rico standing out at the first down stick over there, wide open, nobody around him. So 8.22 to go in the opening quarter. Glasgow trailing 7-0. Dalton Garman back deep to receive the kick for Barron County off the foot of Glasgow's Canaan Allen. And I think Glasgow may be a player short as Canaan Allen's motioning to the sideline, hey, we need another guy out here. Seven seconds on the play clock. Now we're set to go. There's the snap. The kick is away. Nice spiraling kick. Will be fair caught at the 30-yard line by Garman. Kanan Allen has punted the ball very well this year. He's averaging 37 yards per kick, and he got a 32-yard punt right there. Yeah, he kicks it nice and high and has a little spire on it. Really good kick. So the Trojan offense back on the field for the second time this evening. Already in front, 7-0. Two wide outs on the left side, a single wide out to the right. Now back on either side of Spillman, who's in shotgun. Spillman to throw. Has time, now flushed out of the pocket, rolling to the right side, trying to run with it. He'll get a couple of yards before being taken down. Looks like number 32, Cash Wells on that tackle. 6'3", 201 senior. It's a two-yard pickup. It'll be second down and eight. Spillman in shotgun with a back to his left. Three receivers left side. One man wide to the right. 
Going to give this off oh. to Sewell, and he is hit immediately <laughs> as soon as he took the handoff. That's big Pam. Pam Johnson, number 53, 6'3", 273, and a senior. In the backfield for they could turn around. The Barron County offensive line had a lot of trouble trying to block Monroe County last week in that loss there in Tompkinsville. And that's really the first time we've seen the Glasgow defensive line get some good penetration. Loss of two yards back to the 30. It'll be third down and 10. Three men wide to the left side, one man wide to the right. Spillman rolling out to the left side. He's under pressure. Flushed out, rolling out to the left side. Going to let it go. Pass going to be intercepted by the Scotties at the 40. That's Jarek Martin. 35-30, 25-20, 15-10, 5. End zone, yes. touchdown, Scotties. All right. Uh oh, we got a flag. We got a flag late after the touchdown. Give me sideline warning, probably. I believe you're right, Larry. Yeah. So the touchdown's going to stand. An interception return of 37 yards for the touchdown. During the run back, sideline warning. Sideline warning against, the, against Glasgow. Got it. First defensive score for the Scotties this year. That touchdown brought to you by Elmore Realty in auction, and now here comes the Walbert Trucking PAT. As Wesley Travis comes on to attempt that, Wesley's been great so far this year, 18 of 19 on his point after touchdown attempts. And I think the Scotties may have moved here. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense, number 51, five-yard penalty. We're going to replay the try. It'll make it a 25-yard extra point instead of a 20-yarder. Easton Jesse, the snapper. Jarek Martin, the holder. Good snap. Hold down. Kick up. And it is no good. Wide to the left. So Wesley misses just his second extra point of the year. And Barron County will maintain a one-point lead at 7-6 to six with 7.07 to go in the opening quarter. That interception, by the way, for Jarek Martin, his second of the season. And we see on YouTube... We'll go ahead and call this our Hardy's Hot and Fresh Play of the Game by Jarek Martin as that interception leads to Glasgow's first score. Jarek made a nice return of 37 yards after that interception. Appreciate Hardy sponsoring that Hot and Fresh Play of the Game for us. So now Wesley Travis will tee the ball up, kick it away. Bray Bewley back deep for Barron County. Dalton Garman will come up the field and he drops it. It's going to free, free ball back at the 18. He goes and picks it up and he'll be tackled back at the 17 yard line. Bewley tried to make that catch on the run. It went right through his hands and had to go back and chase it down just to get it before the Scotties could get there. Number three, Trey Smith made that tackle at 5'10", sophomore, 156. Oh, 6.59 to go in the first quarter, 7-6 lead for Barron County as they get the football. They'll start at their own 17-yard line. First down, 10. Spillman in shotgun. Back to his left. Two receivers to the left side. Slot man on the right side of the formation. And Spielman going to keep it around the left end. The quarterback looking for some room and not going to find a lot. Maybe a yard or two. Number 16, Lucas Christian on that tackle. 5'10", 138 senior. Gain of two to the 19. It'll be second down and eight. Well, so far, Barron County trying to go wide on everything. They, they, I think they run it up the middle one time and second didn't get much. The ball is spotted at the Trojan 19 yard line. Sewell, the running back to the left of Spillman. Two wideouts each way. 
There's the snap. Spillman with a quick throw. Swing pass to Sewell out of the backfield, and he drops it. It was close to being a lateral, but the officials say it was a forward pass and an incomplete pass. So that'll bring up third down and eight. That's the third or fourth time we've already seen the Trojans try that little swing pass to Sewell out of the backfield. Yeah, he's, he's, done, a, he's done one quick pitch out to the left and then two swing passes to the right so far. Good yardage on one of them, but the rest of them have been stopped pretty well. Trips to the near side, single wide out to the left. Spillman in shotgun. Rolling out the right, under pressure, Damn. gets away. Throws, pass caught by Sewell. And he's going to have the first down as he takes it down the left side on outside the 30 and down around the 33-yard line. Well, they let containment that time. He got out to the left side. They had good pressure on him, but he rolled out and uh, got away in time to make the, the pass connection. Jacob Brunson on the tackle, second one for him. Pick up a 14 yards on that play. First and 10, Barron County at their own 33. One wide out each way as Barron County goes to an I formation for the first time. Going to give this off to Sewell. He'll go up the middle with it and get two, three, maybe four. Let's see where they spot him. Right, Mason. Mason Arms on that one. We'll put him at the 36-yard line, so a gain of three. It'll be second down and seven. Mason Arms on the tackle, 5'9", 195 seam. Second down, seven. Again, an eye formation with a receiver each way. Tight end on the right side. Give it off to the fullback this time, and he'll slip through the first tackle and get two, maybe three. That's going to be Cody Kearney on the carry. And that's Mason Arms again on the tackle. Two in a row for him. Mason Arms on that tackle. Well, big third down play here. Need to get him off the field. Gain of two to the 34. Or to the 33, excuse me. Third down and five here for Barron County. Or 38 yard line, I'm sorry. And now Glasgow moves and comes across, and that's going to be a free five yards. Free first down. On the defense. Five. Can't give up those free first downs yeah, there. That's, uh, that's just a gift right there. You got to make them earn it. 4.23 to go in the opening quarter. Barron County 7, Glasgow 6. Barron County's touchdown coming on a 50-plus yard touchdown pass over the middle. Glasgow's coming on an interception return, a pick six. One receiver right, wing back on the right side, an eye formation in the backfield. Spillman under center, busted play here. Somebody went the wrong way. Spillman's still going to get good yardage out of it, though, as he's going to cross midfield and get to about the 48-yard line in Glasgow territory. Yeah, looks like number eight on that tackle. That's Dalen Thomas. His first tackle of night, 6'2", 200-pound sophomore. Flag on the play. Legal formation yep, on that. the offense. Legal formation. They had five in the backfield. Five in the backfield. Five-yard penalty, replay, first down. I still don't see the flag anywhere on the either. field. I don't need Never saw it come down. I just saw the official come over and start to make a call. So that'll make it first and 15 for the Trojans as that backs the football up to the 39-yard line. 3.49 to go in the opening quarter, 7-6 Trojans. Kearney and Sewell in the eye formation. Spillman under center. Wide out to the right side. Spillman to throw. Rolling out to the left side. Pass going to be caught. And that is, I think, Kearney on the catch. He's taken out of bounds in Glasgow territory. It is Kearney who made the catch. He's taken out at the 49-yard line. Max Lee on the tackle, number two for him for the junior. Too much that time for Barron County, though, on first and 15. They yeah. get about 11 of it. It'll be second down and uh, second down and four now. Yeah, they've seen something they like on these little swing passes. That's about all they've thrown except for the big long one that was wide, wide open. Spillman is six of eight through the air to start the ball game for Barron County. Backs in the eye formation again on second and four. Give it off to Sewell. He'll go up the middle. Has room, and he is going to have the first down across the 40 and down inside the 35 to the 34-yard line. 
Ryan Morgan on the tackle, 5'9", 132 senior, and it, he made a touchdown saving tackle there also, right straight up the middle of that time. Pick up a 15 yards there. First and 10, Barron County at the Glasgow 34. Again, eye formation in the backfield. Trojans have found something with this eye formation. Give it off to Sewell again this time, and not much this time, a couple. Looks like Jacob Brunson down there on the bottom. Number 33, and Max Lee also with him. Is a gain of two to the 32-yard line, second down and eight. Two receivers to the left side, a single wide out to the right. Sewell in the backfield, going to hand it off to him up the middle. Spillman was in shotgun that time, and Sewell going to get it to the 30, down to the 29. Gain of about three there. Uh, Looks like it was Cam Johnson and Frankie Siance team up on that tackle. So another big third down play here coming for the defense, although Barron County at this point probably in four down territory, and the Scotties have a player down. Let's see, I would say. Sianci down on his hands and knees yeah, in some obvious pain. Well, this is not a cramp, I don't think. Glasgow training staff uh, tending to him right now. Let's again remind you that we here at WCLU are looking for a little help from some reliable folks. If you are interested in maybe being a board operator for our ball games or a camera operator for our video feed for our ball games, uh, we would ask that you email Kirk Patrick, and that email is Kirk, K I R K, at woohoo107.com. So that's K I R K at W U A T U. 107.com. If you'll send an email to Kirk at that email address, you may have an opportunity to join our team here at WCLU and be a board operator or a camera operator for us. And, uh, Frankie Cianci now being helped off the field, not putting any weight on his right leg. So certainly hate to see that. And a big good. loss for the Scotties if he's not able to continue both on the defensive and offensive lines. And coming in to replace him is the big freshman, Catavion Fryer. Catavion. Catavion's got some nice speed. Catavion, a 6'2", 253 freshman, wears number 99. So third down and five. Got to be careful not to jump here if you're the Scotties. Spielman has a snap. Rolling left, it's a shovel pass. Again, it's going to be caught by Bird, and he is going to have his first down. It's the second time tonight the Trojans have run that play for a first down. Yeah, they have. That's number I think it was number eight, I believe. I believe it was uh, Dalen Thomas on that tackle. That would be his second one. Ball at the 22-yard line for the Trojans, where it's first and 10 as we go under a minute remaining in this opening quarter. Barron County looking good on offense here. They have challenged this Glasgow defense more than anybody else has so far this season. Yeah, so far they have. 132 yards of offense for the Trojans in this first quarter. Jeff Garman will not be happy about that. Here's a give to another it's tailback, and uh, that is Braxton Carnes who made the carry. Ball pops out, but I think they're going to say he was down. First time we've seen Braxton Carnes carry the football. He's a 5'9", 176 sophomore. Well, that was Catavion Fryer on that tackle, 6'2", 253 freshman. His first tackle. There's no gain on the play. It'll be second down and 10. And that will be the final play of the first quarter. After one, it's Barron County 7, Glasgow 6. We're back after a one-minute timeout on WCLU Sports. Hey, son, what you doing? Daddy, I'm going to own a dealership one day. All right, I'll dream with you. From one small dream to over 25 dealerships in the state of Kentucky, we have set out to provide Kentuckians with reliable vehicles and the best customer service for over 50 years. This may have started with a simple dream, but our dedication to our customers will go on for generations. 
Are you looking for a new career where you'll be a part of a family-owned business for over 50 years? Walbert Trucking is a trucking company based right here in Glasgow. With Walbert Trucking, you'll get full benefits, great pay, and 401k. And you'll be home daily. Unlimited possibilities await you. Apply today and become a member of the Walbert Trucking Team. 106 Sean Lane in Glasgow, 651-6784. Marion County 7, Glasgow 6 as we get this second quarter underway here at Hank Roy Stadium. First, second and 10 for the Trojans at the Glasgow 22. Spillman rolling out to the right side, going to run with it, and he is going to get wrapped up after a gain of about three yards, it looks like, down to the 19-yard line. Like number 18, Kellen Stone on the tackle. That's number two for him tonight. Yeah, big third down play here. Of course, it's four down territory. Look at the Garcia's Grill sizzling stats through the first quarter. Glasgow and Barron County. Barron County leading seven to six. Trojans with six first downs. Glasgow yet to have a first down. Their offense has only been on the field for three plays. Barron County has dominated time of possession, 10 minutes and 59 seconds. Third down and seven here for the Trojans. Going to give this thing off to the tailback Braxton Carnes. He'll not get much, but this is four down territory for Barron County. Yeah, it looks like Mason Arms is the man that made the initial hit, and then Davey, uh, uh, Arms on that David table. Dale came in and helped him out on it. Gain of just a yard to the 18, so it'll be fourth down and six. Again, those Garcia's grill sizzling stats. Barron County 25 yards rushing, 107 passing, a total of 132. Glasgow just three total yards so far. Again, they've only had the ball for three plays. Uh, their score came on a defensive touchdown on an interception return. Those three yards uh, were rushing yardage. Barron County has the one turnover. That was the interception. So fourth down and six here for the Trojans at the Glasgow 18. Spillman under center. Backs in the eye formation. And Barron County going to call a timeout. 10.33 to go in this first quarter. So we'll go ahead and take a timeout as well. It's Barron County 7, Glasgow 6. We are back after a 30-second timeout on WCLU Sports. We're not superheroes, but when people need us, we answer the call. We're not weathermen, but we know the Kentucky seasons like the back of our hands. For over 40 years, we've serviced any brand, any time, with the same-day service guarantee. Now that's a big promise, and that's probably why no one else does it. So when dealing with your heating and cooling, call HVAC Services, and you'll have the right team by your side. Joe Myers, Larry Alexander, and Bruce Tribune back here at Glasgow's Hank Roy Stadium. Tremendous crowd on hand tonight for the first meeting between Glasgow and Barron County in football since the 2016 season. Barron County leads 7-6 to six right now, 10.33 to go in this second quarter. Trojans have a fourth down and six at the Glasgow 18-yard line. Spillman in shotgun. He's got a back to his left, two receivers to the right, one to the left. Spillman rolling out to the left side, looking downfield, under pressure. Now goes back uh -oh. to the other side, throws a man uh -oh. open. It's caught at the first down marker at the 10, at the That's 5, down. and into the end zone. Touchdown, Barron County. Yeah, two missed tackles over on the sideline. It was a throwback. I don't know. He just got, uh, he was rolling to his left and couldn't find anybody and then turned back and rolled to the right and then had a man standing over there wide open. Jackson Bird making the catch and that was uh, all Tate Spielman right there just improvising as he was looking to the left side of the field. He had pressure, rolled back to the right and then found a wide open Jackson Bird on the sideline. Then Bird made a couple of nice moves to make some men miss and got into the end zone. It's 13-6 Barron County. And on for the extra point is Hadley Adams. And the kick is up, and it is good. 10.22 to go in the opening quarter of play, and Barron County has come here to play. They lead the Scotties by a score of 14 to 6. Yep, not the way the Scotties wanted to start. They haven't had the football at all, hardly on offense, and, uh, you know, got Got it done one defensive series with the interception, but Barron County has a, a really good game plan. They're just moving the ball and taking time off the clock, keeping Glasgow's offense off the field. A couple of scores for you here. Metcalf County and Wayne County are tied at seven at the end of the first quarter. 
And uh, Logan County leads Allen County Scottsville 7-0. About nine minutes to go in the second quarter there. Tell you about that drive for Barron County in just a moment as Hadley Adams has it teed up for Barron County. Cam Bull and Rico Crowder back deep for the Scotties. And the squib kick going to be bobbled by Bull. He picks it up at the 24, comes across the 25, gets away from a couple of Packers there, the 30, 35, 40. 45, back to the middle of the field at the 50-yard line and down just across the 50 in Barron County territory to start this drive for the Scotties. Number eight, Dakota Wade on that tackle. He's a junior, 5'8", 155. They may put him down right on the 50, and I believe they will. Nice that, run by Cameron. That drive for Barron County, 14 plays, 8 minutes and 45 seconds, goes 83 yards, and Jackson Bird and... Uh, Spielman hook up for the second time tonight. This one an 18-yard touchdown pass, and the extra point good for Adams. It's 14-6, Trojans 10-11 to go in the first half of play. So Scotty offense on the field for just the second time. Here's the give to Dalen Thomas, and he's going to get popped right at the line of scrimmage. That's actually Gavin Neal, excuse me. Gavin Neal going to get hit at the line of scrimmage and dropped right there for no gain. Yeah, Waylon Clemens on the tackle. He's a junior, 6 foot 155, first tackle. Second down, 10 for the Scotties. Crowder comes wide to the right. Bull, Thomas, and Martin wide to the left side. Neal to the right of Jesse in the backfield. Easton has the snap. Looking to the left side. Throws. Pass dropped by Thomas right through his hands. Incomplete. Boy, the Scotties are struggling right now. It is, they did not come to play tonight. Well, they looked like they were hyped up. Maybe they're a little bit too hyped up. As I said, you got to control your emotions, and you know, they're just doing things. They're just not making the simple plays right now. So to be third down and ten, we'll see if the Scotties can get something going here. Lasco has three yards of total offense with 9:33 to go in the first half. Two receivers each way. Jesse in shotgun. He'll throw. Under pressure, lets it go, pass is incomplete. Well, the pass was just a little high and on the inside, but still one that Rico, if you you got to catch that ball. And, boy, if the Scotties are leaving the offense on the field here on fourth down and 10 from the 50, now they won't. No, no they are going to no, bring no, in the punting no. unit. Can't do that. Looks like a late decision, but they are bringing in the punt team. Scotty's just completely out of sync on offense right now. Nine twenty-eight to go in the second quarter. Fourteen to six. Barron County in front. And they're about to get the football back. Garmin back deep, awaiting the kick, and the kick by Allen is a shank, almost off the side of his foot. It's going to bounce at the thirty-yard line and go out of bounds on a sideways bounce. It goes right out at the thirty, so a punt of just twenty yards. It's probably the worst punt of the season so far for Kane and Allen. So first and 10 for the Trojans at the 30, and uh, the Scotty defense needs to step up and get this ball back quickly. Yeah, need a three and out right here very badly. You need to get this thing evened up here before halftime if you can and start all over again. Glasgow's defense has been on the field basically the entire football game. Both times the offense has been on the field, they've gone three and out. And drop passes are a couple of the reasons why. Spillman going to go under center here. Broken eye formation in the backfield. Give it off to the fullback, Kearney. He's going to get to the 35-yard line and be taken down right there after a gain of five. 24, Ryan Morgan on the tackle, number two for him. Well, they're not having any trouble blocking us up front. And that is surprising, quite honestly, because they could not block Monroe County last week. Tate Spillman was running for his life the entire ball game. But it's been a different story tonight. Barron County has controlled the line of scrimmage for the most part. They have done that. A wide out each way. Eye formation in the backfield. Spillman under center. Scotty's showing blitz off the right side. They're coming. Going to give this Got thing em. off 
the tailback Braxton Carnes, and he's going to get nothing, I don't believe. Yeah, run blitz. Mason Arms shot right in there and got him at the ankle just as he caught the football. So no gain. It'll be third down and five. That's Mason's fourth tackle already. Scotty's need to get off the field right here on third and five and get the ball back in decent field position for the offense. 8-16 yeah, to go in the first, uh, second quarter. Barron County in front, 14-6. Spillman under center. Going to pitch it. That's Carnes, and he's not going to get the first down. Good. He'll go down after a gain of a couple. Yeah. That's number four, Gavin Neal and Mason Arms on that tackle again. And for the first time tonight, Barron County will send in the punting unit. Well, they did, the defense did their job that time. Got off the field. Hopefully, if they punt this football. Braden Houchins going to punt it away for Barron County. Derek Martin back deep for the Scotties. It's fourth down and three for the Trojans. They're at their own 37. Houchins gets it away. Bounces at the 39, takes a Barron County roll. And it'll be down to the 26-yard line by Jackson Bird. Jackson Bird downs the ball. A punt of 37 yards with no return. All right, Scotty's need to, all they need is one really good play to open up and get something going. I believe they'll get untracked, but you got to get that first one first. Glasgow has had the ball for two minutes and one second its entire <laughs> first half, and there's 7.22 to go in the second quarter. Now, usually time of possession doesn't mean a whole lot, but uh, it sure is this game. Jesse in shotgun. He's got two receivers each way. Neal is the running back set up to his right. Put Crowder in motion. Going to give it off to him on a sweep around the left side. Rico makes a few men miss. He's across the 30 and up near the 35-yard line with a gain of about eight. Maybe nine, actually. Yep, it will be a nine-yard pickup. I'm trying to pick up a tackler right here. He's amongst a bunch of players. I can't pick his number up. Number seven. Number seven, and that's Dolphin Garman. That's his first tackle. He's a sophomore, six foot one seven. And good to see Frankie Cianci coming back into the ball game for the Scotties. So good to see Frankie able to continue here today. Second down and one for Glasgow at their own 35. Thomas going in motion. Going to give it off to him on a sweep around the right end, trying to get to the corner. He does. He's got the 40, and he'll go out of bounds around the 42-yard line. Thomas. Oh, you got to be kidding. Number five, Tate Spillman on that tackle. On the play. And a flag is thrown by the back judge here at the end of the play. We'll see what the call is here from Hilton Isabel. Personal foul called Personal against Glasgow. Huh? That was a. So Jeff Garman said it, it should be a dead ball foul. Yeah. And it should be first down, but it's not going to be. Hmm. They're not giving them that. It'll be second down and nine for the Scotties. Well. Hmm. Is it first down or second down? First down. Thank you. So it is. No, it is first down. Now they changed the box over there. It had second down on it. Now they do change it to first down. So first and 10 for the Scotties because of a dead ball first foul, but that moves 10. it all the way back to the 27-yard line. So Scotty's essentially starting this drive over again because they started at the 26. Two wide outs each way. Jesse in shotgun. Neal to his right. Jesse off play action to throw. Caught by Martin at the 25, at the 30. Spins off to the 35-yard line. Ball popped out. Are they going to say he was down? I think they yeah, are. I think so. 33 on that tackle, and that would be Waylon Clemens. That's his second tackle on the night. He's a little shaken up, and he's going off the field. Gain of nine. It'll be second down and one with the ball at the Glasgow 36. 6-10 to go in the first half of play. It's 14-6, Barron County in front. 
Scotty's only score has come on a pick six by Jarek Martin. And a timeout taken by Barron County here. By the way, that last first down that Glasgow got was brought to you by South Central Bank. And uh, that was the first first down of the night for the Scotties. It came uh, with about seven minutes to go in the second quarter. And, uh, Larry, it just it feels a little bit like the offense wasn't mm, quite focused no. coming out here to play tonight, but maybe they're going to get their feet under them here and get something going. Well, like I say, we just need, we just need one really good drive here, one, uh, maybe one big play to try to get us uh, on track right here. But it does, too. You're exactly right. The offense just didn't seem like they are in sync right from the start tonight. The too many drop passes and penalty, couple of penalties. I don't know what that personal foul was for. I didn't see that. It was a late hit or what? I think it was a late hit, but I I saw something happen out of the corner of my eye right near the end of the play, but I couldn't tell exactly what had happened. The second down in the yard here for the Scotties at their own 36 with exactly six minutes to go until halftime. Well, still time to mount a good drive and get something on the board. A wing back on either side. That's Bull and Thomas. Neal, the running back, going to fake it to him, give to Bull on a sweep around the left end. Cameron has the first down as he gets across the 40 and dives forward to the 42. It's a South Central Bank first down for the Scotties. Uh, it's number five on the tackle. That's the quarterback, Tate Spillman. Is there second. another flag down, though, it looks like? It sure is. Oh, good and good. that's a hold on the Scotties. <laughs> My, my. Well, we're on worst enemies right now. And that, uh, for the Scotties, will be penalty number three tonight. They've had one of each now, five, 15, and 10 yards. So three penalties for 30 yards. It'll be second down and nine from where that penalty was marked off. Ball at the 28. Frankie Cianci had to come back out of the game on that play. And now a whistle as Glasgow breaks the huddle and a timeout taken by the Scots. Well, let's tell you about some of the other games going on around the area tonight uh, involving area teams. Caverna traveling to Louisville Shawnee, Metcalf County entertaining Wayne County. We told you that game was tied at seven at the end of the first quarter. Hart County hosting Butler County tonight. That's a district game in Class 3A District 2. Edmondson County welcoming Ohio County. Monroe County visiting Adair County. Allen County, Scottsville on the road at Logan County. Warren East playing at Callaway County. Warren Central on the road at Greenwood. Bowling Green at home tonight against Central Harden. South Warren traveling to Louisville DuPont Manual. And Franklin Simpson entertaining Russellville. So uh, with uh, Hart County and Butler County playing tonight, that means Glasgow is the last team that will play a district contest as the Scotties will open up district play next week on the road at Adair County. And this is going to be a tough district this year for the Scotties. Uh, Hart County, Franklin, and Glasgow all rated in the top 11 of the 3A poll. And also, I think the same holds true in the re RPI rankings that came out for the first time this week. Second down and nine for Glasgow. They're at their own 28. Barron County leads 14 to 6. And here's the give to Gavin Neal. Gavin carrying a tackler across the 30 up near the 33. Gavin Neal right. Number four, Braxton Carnes on that tackle. Number two for him. Third down and a long three coming up here for the Scotties. Need to get this first down to keep the drive alive, get a chance to get a score here. Jesse under center. Going to fake the handoff, keep it himself. He gets around the right end with the first down across the 40 and to the 45 and steps out of bounds at the 47. Yeah. Good run, just fake up the middle and the quarterback keeper around the uh, right end. And about 13 there for Easton Jesse on that carry. So that's a South Central Bank first down and a SCRTC crucial third down conversion. Uh, 
First and 10, Scotties at their own 47, down to 420 remaining in the first half. Trips to the left side, a single wide out right. Neal is the running back. Jesse with a snap. Let's it go down the left sideline. It is going to be oh, incomplete, and that's interference. Going to be yeah. called on Barron County as Garman got there early. He shoved Jarek Martin down to the ground before the ball got there. Yeah, all the officials wanted to get in on that one. Three flags came in on that play. Easiest call of the night for the officials there. Yeah, that was Jarek Martin running. It. He, it had, he had his hands out ready to catch the football, and he just reached out and shoved him down. Easy call. One, two. Well, we never did. Our referee has got he, it backwards. He's got it. He's got it. He, when he's got it, this happens occasionally. Yeah. When he's got it turned on, he thinks it's off, and when it's off, he thinks he's got it turned on. So, first down and ten here for the Scotties. They're in Barron County territory at the 37. Jesse, off play action to throw. Looking over the middle of the field, the pass is going to be caught. Oh. What a catch oh. by Rico Crowder! Oh my goodness! He goes down right where he caught it, but a one-handed catch made by the athletic senior. Down at the 19-yard line for the first down. Makes you wonder how he dropped that first one <laughs> when he catches one like that. It looked like he had glue on his hands yeah, right there. He just went up one-handed and jerked it in. It's a South Central Bank first down. First and 10, Scotties at the Barron County 10. 3.49 to go in the first, in the uh, second quarter of play. 14-6 Trojans, but the Scotties trying to get on the board here. A wide out each way and a wing back each way. Neal is the running back. Here comes Thomas in motion. Give it off to the running back. Neal goes up the middle with it. Has good yardage, and he'll get down to right around the 10-yard line. Should be about a yard shy of the first, I believe. Yeah, Dakota Wade on that tackle number two for him, for the junior. And he had he doesn't trip him up. He may get to the end zone. Second down and a one after the nine-yard pickup there for Gavin Neal. Martin wide left, Crowder wide right. Bull and Thomas, the wing backs. Mason Arms in there at the running back spot now. Jesse's under center. Thomas in motion. Give it to Arms up the middle. Big hole, Mason inside the five. Dives to the goal line. Did he get there? Don't think so. But it will be first and goal for the Scotties. The South Central yeah. Bank first down. That's number eight again, Wade. That is his third tackle, Dakota Wade. And again, if he doesn't make that shoestring tackle, he's in the end zone. Boy, the last two runs, the offensive line has opened up a gaping yep. hole for Neal and Arms. First and goal, Scotty's at the one. Yeah, give it to him again. Arms does remain in there as the running back. Bull and Thomas, the wing backs. Martin and Crowder, the wideouts. Jesse will set up under center. Gives to Arms, going to go yeah. up in the middle with it. No Into the end zone. Touchdown, Scotties. <laughs> and Glasgow, of course, will keep the offense on the field here. Go for two to try to make up for that missed extra point back in the first quarter. Scotties trail 14-12, 2.15 to go in the half. No, one yard just, touch, one yard Sorry, Larry, go ahead. Go ahead. Need this two-point conversion here. The one-yard touchdown run for Mason Arms, his second of the season. Arms, the running back again. Same formation with a wing back either side. Going to give it off to Cam Bull. Cam going to get into yes. the end zone for the two-point tries. He All took right. it around the left end and cut it upfield. And that will tie the game at 14-all with 2.15 to go in the first half of play. That touchdown brought to you by Elmore Realty and Auction and that two-point try brought to you by Walbert Trucking. So a new ball game now with a couple of minutes to go in the first half. <laughs> Barron County will get this kickoff. The Scotties are going to get the football back to start the second half. So if Glasgow can get a stop right here, they'll put themselves in good position to potentially come back and take the lead at the start of the uh, third quarter. Yeah, you like, you like to see them a little bit more off of that uh, clock. But that, we'll take a touchdown anytime we can get it. That drive for the Scotties, nine plays, 74 yards, 5.05 off the clock. And Mason Arms with the one-yard touchdown run. The kick, or excuse me, the two-point run, good for Cameron uh, 
Bull, and the game tied at 14 now, 2.15 to play in the half. Yeah, Glasgow started out of themselves that time on the line, opened up some good holes for the run. Uh, of course, go along with Rico's great catch down there. Wesley Travis gets it away. It'll be fielded at the 12-yard line, 15-20. 25, uh-oh, 30, 35, 40, yep. and out of bounds. Actually, before he got to the 40, I believe, is Bray Bewley. Let's see where they mark him out. Yeah. People on the outside on this right there's side. there's another flag down, so let's see what this is. They got sucked in, and he got the sideline on him. It looked like he was going to open up big time. This is on Barron. Holding the call on Barron County. Give you a score here, Adair County leading Monroe County 25 to eight. Don't know at what point that ball game is at. Some folks will text me a score, but they won't tell me what quarter it is. <laughs> It'll be more than a second, surely. First and 10 Trojans, their own 21 to start this drive. An offset eye formation in the backfield behind Spillman. Going to give it off to the fullback. That's Kearney. He finds a big hole. He'll cross the 30 and dives out near the 31-yard line, close to a first down. Yeah, Gavin Neal on it with his second tackle on the night. That's just a big hole right up the middle. I am shocked at the holes this Barron County offensive line is opening up against this Scotty D line. The yeah, D line for the Scotties has been terrific this year. Well, Cam Johnson did something wrong that time of night. They brought him out of the ball game and they're talking to him on the sidelines. Well, whether he got in the wrong position or what it was. It is a first down for Barron County at their own 31, 140 to go in the half. Again, an offset eye. Wing back on the right side. Give it to the tailback this time, Sewell. And he will spin off a tackler and get down to the 36-yard line. Yeah, Jacob Brunson with his fourth tackle on the night right there on that play. Scotty's running in three fresh defensive players here. Minute 10 to go in the half, tied at 14. Well, Cam just came back in. He, they took him out on that one play that they got the first down on. And I don't know exactly what they're talking to him about. Barron County may be content to just go to the break with a 14-all ball game. They're in no hurry here. We're inside of a minute to play now. Second down and six, and the give again to Sewell. He'll take it off right side, and he's going to have another first down up to the 43-yard line. Yeah, he's just actually getting three, four, five yards every time he touches his ball. I think that was number 60 on the tackle. That's Kavion Massey, 6'1", 241 sophomore, his first, first tackle of the night. Down to 30 seconds to go. Barron County only has to one, run one more play here. That's all they want to do. Spillman under center. Now a couple of men will shift over to the left side on the line. Spillman to throw. Rolling out to the right side. Under pressure and lets Through it go. Yeah, that should be grounding. intentional grounding there. There's no receiver anywhere near the area. The referee said, well, there wasn't anybody over there. was there. literally no white jersey where Spillman threw that football. Somehow it's not intentional grounding. There's no out of the pocket on in high school, is Absolutely it? not. What Only yard line to start on? I forgot to write it down. Second down and 10 for the Trojans. That incomplete pass does stop the clock with 10.8 seconds to go. No, just play defense in the secondary now. Don't let them get, <coughs> don't let them get behind you and get a big play. Trojans at their own 43, and now a timeout taken by Barron County. Play clock was about to run out on them that time. Stay tuned for our Don Franklin Auto Halftime Show where we will take a look at the Garcia's Grill sizzling stats for you. We'll also uh, tell you a little bit about the uh, upcoming week ahead in fall sports here at Glasgow High School. As we said, the Scotties will open up district play next week on the road at Adair County. We just told you the Indians right now leading Monroe County by a score of 25 to 8. Yeah, their county's not bad this no, year, especially up there. Team. 
Yeah, Glasgow. That's what Very I'm saying. Hard this us. this district, Franklin. it's, it's going to be a good It's going to be a battle in this district this year. Whoever wins it will have earned it. As the Trojans, uh, by our count, now are out of timeouts. Jeff Garman and Mr. Isbell are not having uh, friendly terms out here. They've been jawing each other for the last half of a quarter. All right, second down and 10 for the Trojans with their own 43. Spillman in shotgun. Got a receiver each way. Low shotgun snap, well, and he's he just going to take a knee right here to run the clock out. <laughs> so that will end the first half of play, and we've got a good one here at Hank Roy Stadium in the first meeting between the Trojans and the Scotties since the 2016 season. It's Barron County 14, Glasgow 14. We'll come back in a moment on our Don Franklin Auto Halftime Show, take a look at the Garcia's Grill Sizzling Stats. And we will do all that after a four-minute timeout here on WCLU Sports. Hardy's two for five dollar breakfast bake goodness into your morning. Choose a biscuit with sausage and egg, biscuit and gravy, or a country fried steak biscuit. Any two, just five dollars. Hardy's goodness in the making. Get exclusive offers on the Hardy's app. When you come into Garcia's Grill, you're welcomed with a smile and you'll love the atmosphere. Garcia's was voted by the community as the best overall restaurant for the past two years. Great food at a great value. They serve fresh, delicious, traditional Mexican dishes, incredible pasta, burgers, steaks, and seafood. People say you can never get burnt out on this restaurant because of all the amazing choices. Garcia's Grill, owned and operated by the Gomez Garcia family. Check them out on North Ray Street in Glasgow and on Facebook. Garcia's Grill, a different kind of Mexican restaurant. South Central Bank has been investing in the Glasgow community for over 50 years. During that time, we've learned a thing or two about hard work, relationships, and a vision for success. South Central Bank is designed to make a difference in the prosperity of our customers and the communities it serves. We want to be a part of your success. Visit SouthCentralBank.com. South Central Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. With a history of scoring touchdowns and breaking records, Dakota Elmore knows a thing or two about hard work. At Elmore Realty and Auction, his team, often referred to as the A-Team, applies that same work ethic in how they serve this community. With a combined 200 years of experience, the team serves our commercial industry, helps families find their dream home, and makes your auction an easy, profitable, and positive experience. Elmore Realty and Auction, trusted since 1935. Check them out on Facebook for listings and auctions. If you already have internet through SCRTC, there's a pretty good chance your speed just went up, maybe even paying less. And if you don't, check on Fiber Optic with SCRTC in your area because 500 meg is now only 70 bucks. That's 500 down and upload. And if you want more speed, SCRTC got it, up to 5 gig of it. Make the switch right now at SCRTC.com and we'll do the install free. This won't last forever. With unmatched customer support, SCRTC, your best and last internet provider. Have you injured yourself playing a sport or exercising? Sports medicine experts at TJ Regional Health are trained to get you back on the road to recovery. Whether you're dealing with sprains, fractures, knee and shoulder injuries, or other common injuries, our goal is to prevent illness and injury in active individuals of all ages and help prevent future problems to maximize your performance. Find out more at tjregionalhealth.org slash rehab. Patients first. Team always. TJ Rehabilitation Services. Monticello Bank first opened its doors in 1895 as a single office in Monticello, Kentucky. Today, there are 21 NBC locations across the Commonwealth. From home loans to commercial lending, Monticello Bank offers a wide variety of convenient financial services and competitive rates from local people you know and trust. Visit them at 1434 Happy Valley Road in Glasgow and let them help make the financial side of your life a little easier. Monticello Bank, where people matter. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. We 
know there's a big difference between being in a community and being part of the community. That's why here in Glasgow, we cheer on the Scotties. We work hard every day to make a positive impact on the community we call home. Behind our golden arches, we strive daily to serve delicious food and treats. If you could only smell this McDonald's ad, you'd smell how delicious this burger and fries really are. Join our McTeam. To learn how, text KY209 to 38000. Benefits include a sign-on bonus up to $500. There's a new flavor in Hardy's Craft Kitchen. Nashville hot chicken. Juicy 100% white meat dipped in buttermilk, hand-breaded and seasoned to bring the heat. Breakfast, lunch, or dinner? New Nashville hot is goodness in the making. It's time for the Don Franklin Auto Scotty's Football Halftime Show on WCLU. Joe Myers, Larry Alexander, Bruce Tribune, back here with you at Glasgow High School on the Don Franklin Auto Halftime show here as the uh, Scotties and the Barron County Trojans tied at 14 here at the break. And, uh, Larry, uh, not a great start to this one for the Scotties. Uh, they only had uh, uh, or actually did not have a first down until about halfway through the second quarter. The score the Scotties got in the first half was a pick six by Jarek Martin, but you're hoping that last drive by Glasgow there shortly before halftime where they punched it in the end zone will maybe get them going a little bit on offense. Yeah, they went to the wing a little bit there and, and ran the football real well. The offensive line got, got into it a little bit, and then they went back to the spread late there, but still ran the football out of it uh, with the exception of one real good catch by Rico Crowder that got us first, first down deep in their territory. So, uh, maybe that woke them up just a little bit. Uh, hopefully in the second half we'll see on this first drive when they come out. For Barron County, uh, they played well there here in the first half. I've been impressed with the Trojans. They did. Had a ver they've got a very good game plan going. They, they ran the football. They would get three, four, or five yards of whack. They threw it on little swing passes and, and, uh, and just got first downs after first downs and uh, and kept the clock running and kept Glasgow off the field on offense. Pass so, if you, I'm sorry, I thought so you were very, done. Very good game plan. Didn't mean to interrupt you there. A few scores for you here before we turn things over to Larry and Bruce for the Garcia's Grill Sizzling Stance. Adair County leading Monroe County 25-8. to I believe that game's at halftime. Logan County leads Allen County Scottsville 14 nothing at halftime. And it's Wayne County over Metcalf County 20-7 to at halftime. And now with the score tied at 14 between Glasgow and Barron County here at the break, it's time to take a look at the Garcia's Grill Sizzling Stats. And with that, here are Larry and Bruce. Larry? All right, Joe. Barron County won the uh, toss and uh, decided to take the football. First time Glasgow has not won the toss this year or not gotten the football first anyway. Uh, Barron County, after the kickoff, took over on their own 27-yard line at 11.55 of the first quarter. From that point, they uh, went on a five-play, 73-yard drive. It culminated in a uh, uh, Jackson Bird 58-yard touchdown pass from Tate Spillman. Uh, Glasgow apparently had some kind of uh, mix-up in the defensive secondary, and uh, Bird was just wide open out there, and all he had to do was catch it and run it in the end zone, which he did. Hadley Adams kicked the extra point, and Barron County led 7 and nothing with 9.19 to go in the first quarter. Glasgow would go three and out on their first possession would have to punt the football back to Barron County. But uh, Glasgow got them stopped on first down, and then on second down play, they had uh, they had Spillman bottled up, and he got broke loose and went out to the left sideline and uh, ended up throwing a Hail Mary down the uh, uh, sideline. And Jack Martin came up with the interception at 7.07 of the uh, first quarter. Oh. and uh, took it uh, 37 yards to the end zone for a 37-yard interception return. Uh, the kick this time no good. It was wide left and uh, by Travis, and uh, Barron County still maintained the lead at that point, 7-6 with 7.07 to go in the first quarter. Uh, the Trojans would get the football back after the ensuing kickoff on their own 17-yard line at 6.59 of the uh, first quarter and they just kept the football this is the one that really showed what their game plan was they went on a 14 play 83 yard drive took eight minutes and 45 seconds off the clock jackson bird with his second touchdown pass of the night from tate spillman it was an 18 yarder this time 
Hadley Adams kicked the extra point, and Barron County led 14-6 at that point. <laughs> we would trade punts on the next two possessions as the Scotties would go three and out again, and then uh, Barron County would punt on their next possession, and that would set Glasgow up in field position at their own 26-yard line with 7.22 to go in the second quarter. From that point, the Scotties went on a nine-play, 74-yard drive, took 5.05 off the clock. Uh, they did it with a little bit of passing and a lot of running on this one, and Mason Arms went over from one yard out for the touchdown since they missed the ins uh, first extra point on the first touchdown. They went for two on this one, and it was a two-point conversion. Cameron Bull ran it in from three yards out for the two-point conversion, and the game was tied at 14 all. Barron County would get the football back one more time, but they were in no hurry to do anything and they let the clock run out. So here at halftime, in this uh, revival of the series, uh, it's 14-14. I guess, Bruce, we're going to start all over and play a half for it, I guess. Yeah, well, it, like you say, it's all tied. So it, 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 everybody starts <laughs> even to start the second half. Thank you, Larry. Here in our Don Franklin Auto Halftime Show, let's look at our Garcia's Grill sizzling stats. Larry told you the score is tied at 14-all. Barron County picked up eight first downs. Glasgow had six. Trojans 34 yards on the ground, 125 through the air for a total of 159. For the Scotties, 57 on the ground, 27 through the air for 84. Had one turnover in the first half. Uh, Barron County fumbled once, they got it back, but Glasgow did pick off a, an interception. Glasgow did not have a turnover. Both teams were penalized three times for 30 yards and, and as Larry said Barron County's tried to have a ball control game in which they have they ran 31 plays consuming 16 minutes and 54 seconds Glasgow 17 plays seven minutes six seconds individually in that first half for Barron County their leading rusher was Austin Sewell with 33 yards on seven carries he had a long of 15. Cody Kearney picked up 17 yards on three carries with a long of 10. Braxton Carnes had four carries for three yards and Tate Spillman had one yard on five carries. Spillman was eight of 11 passing for 125 yards and two touchdowns. He did throw an interception that went back for a touchdown. For the Scotties, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, for receiving, uh, Jackson Berg's their big receiver, four catches, 29 yards, two touchdowns, a long of 58. Austin Sewell had three catches for 21 yards, and Cody Kearney had one catch for 13. Braden Houchins punted one time for 37 yards. For the Scotting, leading rusher is Gavin Neal with 17 yards on four carries. Easton Jesse had one carry for 14 yards. Mason Arms had 10 yards on two carries and a touchdown. Rico Crowder had one carry for nine yards, and Dalen Thomas had one carry for seven yards. Easton Jesse was two of six for 27 yards. Those catches, one to Rico Crowder for 18 yards, and Jarek Martin had one for 19 yards. Kanan Allen punted two times for 52 yards. That's a 32-yard average. Uh, a, a, a long of 32. That's a 25-yard average, excuse me, uh, here in that first half stats. So at halftime, our Garcia's Grill sizzling stats uh, it's Barron County 14, Glasgow 14. We'll return after this three-minute timeout on WCLU Sports. This has been your Don Franklin Auto Scotty's Football Halftime Show. The second half kickoff is just minutes away on WCLU. Phillips IGA, a family market since 1960. Visit the butcher shop where you'll find fresh cuts of fine meats from an in-store butcher and delicious hamburger ground fresh, plus a fresh selection of garden vegetables and fruits. They proudly carry legacy dairy milk produced right in their hometown of Highsville. Find your favorite national brands. Download the Phillips IGA app to start saving. View their weekly sales ad or simply shop online. Phillips IGA and Butcher Shop. Friendly faces and fair prices. Located on Highway 70 in Highsville. Kentucky Farm Bureau agents wear a lot of hats. There are coaches, volunteers, church members, neighbors. 
someone who's there when you need them, especially when you need them most. That may be a lot of hats, but they're all the perfect fit. Kentucky Farm Bureau, big on commitment. Hey son, what you doing? Daddy, I'm going on a dealership one day. All right, I'll dream with you. From one small dream to over 25 dealerships in the state of Kentucky, we have set out to provide Kentuckians with reliable vehicles and the best customer service for over 50 years. This may have started with a simple dream, but our dedication to our customers will go on for generations. Are you looking for a new career where you'll be a part of a family-owned business for over 50 years? Walbert Trucking is a trucking company based right here in Glasgow. With Walbert Trucking, you'll get full benefits, great pay, and 401k. And you'll be home daily. Unlimited possibilities await you. Apply today and become a member of the Walbert Trucking Team. 106 Sean Lane in Glasgow, 651-6784. We're not superheroes, but when people need us, we answer the call. We're not weathermen, but we know the Kentucky seasons like the back of our hands. For over 40 years, we've serviced any brand, any time, with a same-day service guarantee. Now that's a big promise, and that's probably why no one else does it. So when dealing with your heating and cooling, call HVAC Services, and you'll have the right team by your side. When you come into Garcia's Grill, you're welcomed with a smile and you'll love the atmosphere. Garcia's was voted by the community as the best overall restaurant for the past two years. Great food at a great value. They serve fresh, delicious, traditional Mexican dishes, incredible pasta, burgers, steaks, and seafood. People say you can never get burnt out on this restaurant because of all the amazing choices. Garcia's Grill, owned and operated by the Gomez Garcia family. Check them out on North Ray Street in Glasgow and on Facebook. Garcia's Grill, a different kind of Mexican restaurant. Scotties and the Trojans are tied at 14 here at the break. And uh, we do want to go ahead and uh, take a look at the upcoming weekend sports here for the other fall sports teams at Glasgow High School. For the boys' soccer team, they will be in action on Tuesday and Thursday. Tuesday they'll host this Barron County Ball Club, or soccer ball club, I should say. And then on Thursday they will host the Hart County Raiders. The girls' soccer team on Thursday will be hosting Barron County. The volleyball team on uh, Monday will be on the road at Franklin Simpson, and then on Thursday on the road at Barron County. Girls golf team will be playing in the Region 3 golf tournament. I was unsure of the date. It was not uh, on the uh, schedule, but I believe the girls golf tournament is at some point this week. Uh, the boys Region 3 golf tournament is on Tuesday uh, at Indian Hills Country Club. Cross country team in action tomorrow at the Gatorland meet in Bowling Green. The uh, JV football team on Monday will be on the road at South Warren. That's at 6 o'clock on Monday. And then uh, we've told you a couple of times the varsity football team will begin district play next Friday night on the road in Columbia at Adair County. It's a 7 p.m. kickoff, and our pregame, as always, on the air at 6.30 here on WCLU, 103.1 FM, 1490 AM. Also, of course, online at WCLURadio.com. Set it to 12. Hey guys, they're saying to set it to 12. They're saying to set it to 12 minutes. Sorry, I'm trying to pass a message along here from the referee on the uh, microphone, and we're having issues with the clock. It's not wanting to work at all here on the scoreboard. Sounds good. So we may end up having to uh, keep the time on the field, which would be a little bit rough. The entire scoreboard is out. It looks like. To 11. What would you say, Larry? It went from 158 to 1158. Let's go ahead and take a look at our Hardy's Hot and Fresh play of the game, if we can, real quick. As uh, If you're watching on YouTube, on the Scotty Channel, or on WCLU, you see it is an interception return, a pick six of 37 yards for Jarek Martin back in the first quarter. That was Glasgow's first score. Nice return by Jarek after the interception. And we're going to give you one more look at it here as well on our YouTube feed from a bit of a different angle. 
field level view here of the return coming right at you into your living room there. So a 37 yard interception return pick six. And we're still trying to get the uh, clock to work here in the scoreboard and now everything just went out. Boom. There it comes. There we go. It said at 12 minutes, I don't know whether it's going to work or not. Ladies and gentlemen, they're, they're having clock troubles. Got the score back up there. Well, hopefully we got it done. We'll see. I think we're good to go now. All right, so we are set to go here to start the third quarter. Larry, quick keys for a Glasgow victory here in the second half. Well, I think we got to take that last drive to heart and do and do the same thing here on this first uh, first series and get us a score. We got to get on top one time and see how it goes then. Campbell and Rico Crowder back deep to receive the kick from Hadley Adams. 14 all ball game as we start this third quarter. Adams approaches. Kick is away, low end over ender. Bull fields at the 25, he's got the 30. And gonna be taken down right at the 35 yard line. Good coverage that time by the Trojans. Yeah, number 20 on that, that's Jordan Harris with his first tackle. He's a freshman, six foot 180. Actually, boy, they spot him all the way back at the 32 yard line. I don't know about that spot. Anyway, first and 10 for the Scotties from that point. First down, 10. And Scotties. it does appear the clock is working all right, so. East and Jesse under center. Bull and Thomas wing backs on either side. Neil the running back. Comes Thomas in motion. Jesse going to fake the handoff, keeps it himself, makes a couple of men miss. He's across the 35 and down around the 38-yard line. Number 18, Jonathan Wilson, a senior, 6'2", 185 on that tackle. It'll be a pickup of five yards, second down and five coming up. All of the 38. Well, I think we need to get it in Rico's hands a few times this series. Here, Jack. Second down, five, Scotties. Crowder and Martin are the wide outs. Again, the same formation with Thomas and Bull, the wing backs. Thomas coming in motion. And going to give this ball off to Gavin Neal, oh, and nice Gavin going to get across the 45 and dives out near the 47 with a Glasgow first down, brought to you by South Central Bank. Wade Dakota Wade with his fourth tackle on the night. He held, uh, they held on to the football as long as he could that time and finally let it go, I and mean, it was a good decision. It always makes me nervous, though, Larry, on that exchange when you hold on, it, hold on to it that long. It's easy to fumble. Again, a wide out each way, a wing back either side. Neil the running back. Jesse puts Bull in motion this time, gets it off to him on a sweep around the left end. Cam trying to get to the corner, jumps over man there. He's got the 50, 45, 40, and down around the 39, maybe the 38. We'll yeah. see where they put it down. Nice run. Hurdled a couple of tacklers over there and got some good yardage out of it. Braxton Carnes on the tackle, number three for him, the sophomore. Larry Scotty's ran mostly wing T wing on T. that last yep. scoring drive, yep. and that's what they're doing here. That yep. wing T's working for them against this Barron County defense. Yeah, they went spread just a little bit in that last series. Sticking with the wing T formation here again. Jesse under center. Here comes Thomas in motion. Give it up the middle to Neal. Nice hole. Gavin going to cross the 35 down to the 33-yard line. Yeah, number four, Carnes again on the tackle. Number four for him. Offensive line starting to assert themselves now on this wing tee. Pick up a five, second down and five here. Second down five at the Trojan 34. Crowder wide right, Martin wide left, Thomas and Bull the wing backs, Mason Arms the running back now. Jesse under center. Give it to Thomas. Has to make a man miss in the backfield. He's got the 35 to 30, and he'll have a first down out of bounds on the Glasgow sideline around the 25, I believe. Let's see where they put it down. They'll put it down at the 25. Number 32, Braden Hutchins on that tackle. He's a junior, 5'10", 185. His first tackle of the night. The South Central Bank first down for the Scotties. 14 all, 9.33 to go in the third quarter. Opening drive of the, third half, or the uh, second half for either ball club here. 
Arm still in there at running back. Gavin Neal has a cramp here on the Glasgow sideline trying to stretch that out. There goes Bull in motion. Give this off to Arms. He runs over a tackler initially, but then cannot get away from the second wave of tacklers. He'll be taken down right at the line of scrimmage. Uh, number 10, Tristan Muse on that tackle. Southmore, 5'9", 175. He just ran right into somebody right there at the line of scrimmage. Bounced off, and then uh, Muse came in and made the tackle. No gain on the play. Second down, 10 for the Scotties at the Baron 25. Second down, 10. Crowder the wide out to the right. Bull and arm split in the backfield. Thomas a wing back on the right. Barron County they jumps jumped. and they come across the line of scrimmage. That's the fourth Barron County penalty for how many yards, Bruce? 25 yards. 35 yards, actually, Bruce says. I don't have my readers on, Bruce. Kind of hard for me to see that little Friday. <laughs> I've gotten to that age where I have to, to have old, readers. Yep. Second down and five. Jesse under center. The backs are split. Here comes Thomas in motion to the right side. Jesse fakes the handoff, keeps it himself. Going to get around the right end. He's got the 20 and the 15 and out of bounds before he can reach the 10. Let's see where they put it. Dakota Wade. Dakota Wade on that tackle, number five on the night for him. He's at the 13-yard line. And that'll be a South Central Bank first down. Crowder goes wide to the left side, arms and bull in the backfield. Thomas the wing back on the left. Jesse with a snap, gives to Thomas around the right side. He's got the 10, lowers his shoulder, and a flag goes down right where the hit took place. So I'm not sure what this is. Maybe a hold on the Scotties. 64 holds. 64. Oh, good grief. I don't know whether he blocked somebody and then laid on top of him or what happened, but it was way, it was right at the tackle. Brad Gentry did not think he held right there. He was no, having a conversation no. with the official. So from where? From uh, where we are, I couldn't see what he did. I couldn't either. From where the penalty was marked off, the ball now at the 20-yard line, so the penalty occurred down around the 10. So first and 17, Scotties. Bull goes in motion left side. Going to get off to Thomas on an inside handoff. Big oh, hole. 15, 10, yeah. 5. End zone. Touchdown, Scotties. They call that the old cross book. That's what they take one side, bring it back underneath. And he was right there wide open. Nice call. And a Barron County player is down. That touchdown, by the way, brought to you by Elmore Realty and Auction. That was a run, right? It wasn't a Yes, pick. it was a run. A run of 20 yards that time for Dalen Thomas. Dalen getting uh, his fourth rushing touchdown of the season. Can't tell who the Barron County player is. It's hurt. Down on his back at the 20-yard line. Surrounded by the medical staff from both teams and appears to be in some pain. Certainly hope the young man's okay. Again, we cannot pick up the number. Larry, while they deal with the injury, let's take a look at the drive chart here for Glasgow to open up the second half. They go 67 yards in eight plays. Eight up five minutes and ten seconds off the clock. And Dalen Thomas scores his fourth rushing touchdown of the year. First tonight on a 20-yard run. And uh, the extra point pending here from Dale, or from uh, Wesley Travis. Yeah, Wesley, he needs to make this one because we'll go for two again if we don't. 
Wesley's been awfully reliable. Oh, he has. I just don't <laughs> think that first when he missed, he just didn't look like he made a good connection no. with it. I don't know. He hooked it a little bit left. I don't know what happened on it. It was a hole. Looked like it looked fine. Still uh, down on the ground is the injured player for Barron County. He's still down on his back. Training staff talking to him. And now they sit him up at least. Still can't pick up the number. We've got an official standing between us and him. So 50 something. Can't see that second number. Stay tuned after the ball game for our Don Franklin post-game show where we will uh, take a look at the Garcia's Grill sizzling stats. We'll also interview head coach Jeff Garman 58. as well. And we'll have our Joe. Phillips IGA player of the game, 58 for Barron County, the Jordan. injured player. Jordan Scott. He's a senior. He is 5'7 and 300 pounds. Well, let's remind you that we're looking for some help here at WCLU. We need some reliable folks that are interested in being board operators or camera operators for our broadcast, you can email Kirk, that's K-I-R-K at woohoo107.com, K-I-R-K at W-U-H-U-107.com if you would be interested in being a board operation, a board operator or a camera operator for our broadcast here. And Wesley Travis on for the Walbert Trucking PAT, the kick good. up, and that one is perfect. And the Scotties have the lead for the first time tonight. They now lead it by a score of 21-14, 6 to go in the third quarter. Let's take a 30-second timeout here on WCLU Sports. South Central Bank has been investing in the Glasgow community for over 50 years. During that time, we've learned a thing or two about hard work, relationships, and a vision for success. South Central Bank is designed to make a difference in the prosperity of our customers and the communities it serves. We want to be a part of your success. Visit southcentralbank.com. South Central Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. 6.50 to go in the third quarter here at Hank Roy Stadium. Scotties have the lead for the first time tonight, 21 to 14 over the Trojans. Wesley Travis about to kick this ball away. Bewley and Garman back deep for the Trojans. And the ball going to go out of bounds. So Barron County will get the football at the 35-yard line to start this drive. Hmm. Don't see that happen much. We apologize for our microphone tonight. Not sure what's up with it. It's worked really well up until tonight. Oh, wait a minute. He's spotting the ball at the 20. That's not right. He is spotting the ball at the 24. Should be at the 35-yard line if Barron County accepts the penalty. Their Nobody. other option is for, us to, for the Trojans to have the Scotties re-kick. Nobody touched it. Yeah, it's going to, it's got to go to the 35. Well, yeah, they're moving it now. Yeah. I don't know why they would spot it there. They initially spotted it where the ball went out of bounds. Maybe they was thinking it was a punt. <laughs> Maybe so. <laughs> so Barron County starts first and 10 at their own 35, trailing 21-14, 6.50 to go in the third quarter. We'll see if the Scotty defense can get a quick three and out here by the Trojans. Spillman in shotgun formation. Sewell to his right with two wide outs each way. Spillman under pressure, running around back there. It's a good block. And now Spillman going to run out of bounds just shy of the 40-yard line, and that should have been a crackback block, I yep. think, on Barron County right there, Larry. Well, that's what uh, number 32, uh, Cash Wells, thought about it. You cannot make a blindside block anymore, and it sure looked like that that's uh, what happened to Cash, but they didn't call it. Pick up a four yards. It'll be second down and six for the Trojans at their own 39. Two receivers right, one to the left. Sewell is the running back to the right of Spillman. Five men up front there for the Scotties. Now Sewell motions out of the backfield. It's an empty backfield. Spillman to throw. Looking over the middle. Man is open. It's going to be caught 
And that is Jackson Bird, Bird again, again making the catch down at the 35-yard line. Yeah, we can't stop that kid tonight. That's uh, Ryan Morgan made the tackle his third on the night. That was just a little lamed up throw right over the middle. He just went up and caught it. Pick up of 26 yards. Trojans get a new set of downs here at the Glasgow 35. Well, Bird is, uh, he's 6'2", 175. He just went, he's got good size, the receiver. Spillman under center. Offset eye in the backfield. Slot back on the right side as well. Going to pitch this to Sewell on a sweep around the right end. And Mason Arms yeah. going to come in and take nice him down tackle. after a very short game. Nice tackle. Mason Arms, number six Mason on the night for him. Pick up of one. Second down and nine. Well, still they're down in four. Four down territory here, so you got to stop them four times in a row. Baxter in a broken eye once again. Spillman under pressure as he wants to throw, gets it away, looking for Bird, and it's incomplete this time, overthrown. And he was bracketed in coverage by Glasgow's Dalen Thomas and Ryan Morgan. Yeah, good coverage that time, good pressure on him, made him roll out to the right and go all the way to the sideline. So I didn't think he was going to get it off there for a second, but he did. Third down nine here for the Scotties. Or for the Trojans, I'm sorry, not the Scotties. 21-14, Glasgow. Clock stopped with 5.26 to go in this third quarter. Backs in the eye formation. Spillman fakes the pitch, going to keep it around the right end, and he is going to be out of bounds, shy of the first down marker, but he got good yardage. I think he's out around the 28, looks like. Yeah, it looks like it was Morgan again. Ryan Morgan again on the tackle over there on the sidelines. So it'll be a big fourth down and three play coming up here. Got to get to the 25-yard line. Yeah, you got to watch quarterback and watch number two. And watch the hard count as well. Yeah, watch the hard count, that's for sure. Spillman under center. Kearney and Sewell in the eye formation. Slot back on the left side, and Glasgow jumps again. That's the second time tonight Glasgow has given them a free first down on an offside penalty. Mm -mm. That's twice. That's kept drives going for them. You have to know, you have to know that they are going to come with a hard count on fourth and three. It's a given. <laughs> now you've got to start all over again and stop them on four more. Ball at the 22, first down and 10. Offset eye in the backfield behind Spillman. Wing back on the right side, a wide out to the right side. Spillman with a long count, going to give it off to the fullback, Kearney, up the middle. He's through the first wave of tacklers, and he's down around the 15. 24, Morgan again on the tackle, number five for Ryan. Ryan Morgan makes the tackle. Pick up of eight, it'll be second down and two. Spillman under center, the back's in an offset eye. Wide out to the left. And a whistle as the ball is snapped. False start the call against Barron County. Going to back him up five yards to the 20. Barron County's been penalized five times for 40 yards now. Scotty's five penalties for 45 yards. 3.32 to go in the third quarter. Glasgow leads 21-14. It's second down and eight for the Trojans. Ball to the Glasgow 20-yard line. Offset eye to the right. Wide out and a wing back to the right. He went off underneath to the fullback, Kearney. Scott, right, Scotty's right. do a great job yeah. of standing him up at the line of scrimmage. Really good that time. I think that was 
That was Mason Arms again, number 25. Tackle number seven. Up by the interior of the Scotty line led by Mason Arms. Third, Third down, down and eight. eight. And the Trojans again in four down territory, of course, so they'll have two downs to pick this up if they don't get it right here. 2.45 left in the third quarter. Trips to the left side, a single wide out to the right. Sewell the running back, Spillman in shotgun to throw. Shovel pass. Going to set up a screen to Sewell, and the Scotties have it sniffed out. Oh, they missed the, tackle, missed the tackle, though. Sewell going to be stopped shy of the first down, but he should have been stopped back at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Mason Arms came up and made the tackle. I can't tell what it was, Morgan, or who it was that missed the tackle. I think it was. Eighth tackle for Mason. Gain of three yards there. It'll be fourth down and five with the ball at the 17-yard line. Again, watch the hard count right yeah, here. Yeah, and watch the shovel pass. They've used it successfully about three times tonight. Spillman in shotgun, trips to the left side. They do snap it. And Spillman rolling out to. to the left side, and he is going to have his first down, and he may get in the end zone. He, he does. Did. Touchdown, Barron County. That's a man you had to stop, and we couldn't get the corner. He got the corner on us. Is there a flag on the play? I believe yeah, there is. I believe there is. During the run, face mask oh. on the defense. That penalty is going to be applied. Result of the play. It's going to be well, it goes against the Scotties. So, Aaron County within an extra point of tying this game up here. Send Hadley Adams out to attempt it. And she's only missed two all year long. Now 13 of 15 on the season. And now unsportsmanlike conduct. Be enforced called on the kickoff. Unsportsmanlike against Glasgow. Conduct hmm. called against Glasgow. Hadley will be imposed on the kickoff. Yeah. Adams gets the kick up, and it looks good from here, and it is, and we are tied at 21 with 2.28 to go in this third quarter. So we'll tell you about that drive here in just a moment. For Barron County, it goes nine plays, 65 yards, four minutes and 22 seconds, the time off the clock. And a 17-yard touchdown run for the quarterback, Tate Spillman. His first rushing touchdown of the night, but on the season, that is his uh, team high eighth rushing touchdown. The extra point good for Adams, and we are tied at 21. So Adams is going to be able to kick this ball from Glasgow territory at the 45-yard line. I don't think she can get it in the end zone, so we might be have a play on this one. Cam Bull and Rico Crowder are back deep. She may do it, though. I don't know. No, Squib kick. Scribber. And Crowder lets it go through his hands and into the end zone, and that will be an automatic touchback. Well, she did get it into the end zone, just not well, the traditional not way. The way you, not the traditional way. way. Yeah. So the Scotties will take over first down and 10 at the 20-yard line. And once again, the offense needs to go to work as we are tied at 21 with 2.28 to play in the third quarter. Going to be honest with you, I did not expect this close of a ball game after what happened last, last week, week against yeah. for, for the Trojans against Monroe County. Monroe County dominated Barron County last week. I watched that game, and... Monroe controlled the line of scrimmage, and Barron did not look very good, but they look like a different football team here tonight. Playing the Scotties. Could be part of it. Jesse in shotgun. He'll throw quick throw out to Jarek Martin. Makes a man miss. Trying to slip another tackle, and he will be shoved out of bounds right at the first down marker at the 30-yard line. And a flag is down at the end of the play, it looks like. Number eight made the tackle, and that would be Dakota Wade. Six tackle on the night for him. 
And referee Hilton Isabel trying to uh, figure out what the call is. Holding what? called on the Scotties. Be good. Gosh. 20. That'll put the ball back at the 20-yard line. It'll be first and 10 again, so it's like that play never happened. Penalty on Glasgow brings up first and 10 for the Scotty. Jesse in shotgun. Neal the running back to the right, two wide outs each way. Jesse to throw. Under pressure, steps up, and going to be sacked. Back around the 15. Hmm. Number 18 will get that sack, and that will be Jonathan Wilson. Ball at the 16-yard line, so a loss of four. Second down, 14, and now the That's Scotties have some work to do. They're behind the chains. What's a big dude back in the back with a white hat on? What's his job? Second, 14. Two wide outs each way. Jesse and shotgun kneel to his left this time. Four down linemen for the Trojans. Jesse off play action, wants to throw. Looking over the middle, the pass going to be caught by Cam Bull. He's shy of the first down. He'll be down right around the 26, I believe. It'll be third down at about four. Number four, Braxton Carnes on that tackle. That's number five on the night for him. Giving the 27-yard line, actually. So it'll be third down and three. Brings up a third down and three for Glasgow. What, what is that? Resetting the play clock. Jesse in shotgun, two wideouts to each side. Neil the running back. Third down and three. Jesse wants to throw. And the Scotty's going to be called for a hold Need right a hold. here. It's an incomplete pass when it's hit for Jarek Martin, but a clear hold that time called on the Scotties. There's no arguing that one. Number 53 of the offense. That penalty's going. Penalty was declined. The Glasgow fans not happy, but that was an obvious holding call. I saw that through the binoculars. I think you did yeah, too, Larry. Did too, yeah. Cam Johnson reached Cam out Johnson and grabbed, grabbed him. a Barron County player by the jersey. So it'll be fourth down and three. And the Scotties have to send the punting unit in as they're at their own 27. Kanan Allen is apparently injured. And so who's going to punt here for the Scotties? Cam Bull will be the punter. So it'll be the first time Cam has punted all season long. It's a good snap. Bull gets the kick away, end over end, and fielded at the 40-yard line, and the returner dropped right there. That was Rico, I think, on the tackle. That's his second of the night. Chase Fieldman caught the ball. Logan Starr downfield to make the tackle. First Point of 32 10. yards. The ball at the 41-yard line for Barron County. Yard line. 16 seconds to go in the third quarter. Game tied at 21, so the Trojans with a chance to go back in front here. Spillman under center. The back's in the eye formation behind him. A wide out each way. Here's a give to Sewell. Going to get tripped up and fall forward for a gain of two, maybe three. Austin Sewell on tackle left. I'm like David Dale. For a gain of three on the tackle, three for him. Three-yard pickup to the 44. <laughs> and that is the final play of the third quarter. It's 21 all between Glasgow and Barron County with 12 minutes to go. We're back after a one minute timeout on WCLU Sports. Hardy's two for five dollar breakfast bake goodness into your morning. Choose a biscuit with sausage and egg, biscuit and gravy, or a country fried steak biscuit. Any two, just five dollars. Hardy's goodness in the making. Get exclusive offers on the Hardy's app. 
With a history of scoring touchdowns and breaking records, Dakota Elmore knows a thing or two about hard work. At Elmore Realty and Auction, his team, often referred to as the A-Team, applies that same work ethic in how they serve this community. With a combined 200 years of experience, the team serves our commercial industry, helps families find their dream home, and makes your auction an easy, profitable, and positive experience. Elmore Realty and Auction, trusted since 1935. Check them out on Facebook for listings and auctions. There's a new flavor in Hardy's Craft Kitchen. Nashville hot chicken. Juicy, 100% white meat dipped in buttermilk, hand-breaded, and seasoned to bring the heat. Breakfast, lunch, or dinner? New Nashville hot is goodness in the making. Tate Spillman keeps it around the right end as we're a little bit late getting back to action. I don't believe they took a full 60 seconds between quarters right there as... Uh, Spielman going to be taken out of bounds at the 46-yard line in Barron County territory. So it'll be third down and five coming up here for the Trojans. With this fourth quarter just underway, we're tied at 21. Dalen Thomas made that tackle, by the way, his third of the night. Big third down play here for the Scotties. Get them, get them off the field if you can. Spillman under center with the offset eye behind him. Wing back on the left side. Scotty's coming on a blitz up the middle. It gets picked up initially, and now Spillman under heavy pressure, and he's going to throw this ball away. It'll be incomplete. He did have Sewell in the area. But the Scotty's had several players putting pressure on right there. Jacob Brunson, Kevin Massey. I think Cam Johnson was part of that group as well. That ball's a little bit more underthrown. We'll have it. We'll have another pickoff right there. Fourth down and five. And the Trojans will punt it away, apparently at least, from their own 46. Braden Houchins gets it off. Jarek Martin waiting on it to field it. And he will let it roll. And boy, Jarek, Jarek makes me a little nervous, Larry. Mm -hmm. He gets, he gets right, right around, around that football as <laughs> it's bouncing around. You never know that thing might take a bad hop. And hadn't happened yet, but it does make me a little nervous. He's wanting to pick that thing up and run he with it is. what he's wanting to do. Uh, Punt of 41 yards that time for Braden Houchins. Scotty's going to take over first and 10 at their own 13. Garcia's grill sizzling stats through three quarters. Ten first downs for the Scotties, 11 for Barron County. Glasgow 123 rushing, 38 passing, a total of 161. Barron 92 rushing, 154 passing, a total of 246. Jesse under center. Campbell and Gavin Neal the running backs. Wing back is Thomas on the left side. Jesse going to give it off to Bull, trying to get around the left corner. He does. He's got the 15 to 20 and out near the 25-yard line. I think it'll be actually stopped back around the 23 or 24, but it is enough for a South Central Bank first down. Number three, Waylon Clemens on that tackle. That's his third. They give him the 24, so a gain of 11. Rest of those Garcia's grill sizzling stats. Glasgow uh, has not turned the ball over. Barron County has the one interception. Scotty's seven penalties, 70 yards. Barron County, five for 40. Glasgow's had the ball for 14 minutes, 28 seconds. Barron County, 21 minutes and 32 seconds. Jesse gives this one off to Gavin Neal. Gavin slips through a hole there. He's across the 30 and up near the 34-yard line. Number 10, Tristan Muse on the tackle. Number two for the sophomore. Ball at the 33 is where they'll spot it. Pick up of nine, second and one for Glasgow. Jesse gives the guilt to Neal again, and Gavin kind of slips and then able to dive forward out to the 40-yard line. It'll be another South Central Bank first down. He's like 41, maybe on that tackle. That was Brooks Browning. He's a senior, six foot 220, his first tackle. Glasgow 40. Yard line. 10 10-18 to go in this ball game. We're tied at 21. Mason Arms in there as a running back with Cam Bull. Thomas the wing back on the right side. Crowder the wide out on the right side. 
Going to pitch it to Bull to the short side of the field. He's got the 45, and he'll be down just shy of midfield, back around the 48, maybe the 49. Cam went down a little awkwardly that time and slow to get up, but he looks like he's okay. Trojan Thomas on the tackle, his first. He's a junior, 5'8", 170. They'll spot him at the 48-yard line, so a gain of eight. It'll be second down and two. And Bull will come out for a little while. He did uh, went down uh, a little bit uh, awkwardly, as we said, but uh, he's, he's all right. coming up here to get a little water. He looks like he is okay, as Larry just said. Second down, two for the Scotties here. Jesse under center. Give this off to Dalen Thomas around the left end. He's got the 50 to 45, 40, 35, 30. One man to beat. Oh, he's got him. What a move. 10, 5, end zone, touchdown, Scotties. What a juke move that time by Dalen Thomas, but another flag is down. Hold the phone. Oh, good grief. Oh, that was a great play not to be, not to be able to have it count. During the Coming run, back. Holding number th of the offense. Oh, Boy, the Scotties goodness. have had some critical penalties called against them tonight at bad times. So that's going to move the ball back to the Glasgow 44-yard line where it's second down and six now. Who's calling all these holding penalties? I, I haven't seen the flag hit the field yet, hardly. Of course, I'm watching the ball carrier, though. Oh, that was a nice play, not to, not, not to be able to count. Kellen Stone now in there is the wing back to give Thomas a break after that long run. And a motion kneel out of the back. He'll give it off to Mason. Arms off the right side. Mason going to get tripped up. He'll have the first down, I believe, right at the 50. Should be a South Central Bank first down. Gets his fourth tackle of the game. Uh, number eight, Wade, I believe, was his tackle. That's number seven for him. First down, Glasgow. First and ten for the Scotties. 8.39 to go. We're tied at 21 here in the fourth quarter. Don Franklin Crosstown Classic. Coming down to the wire. Jesse under center. Backs are split. It's arms and Neal in the backfield. Give it to Arms, and Mason going to get hit right at the line of scrimmage and get maybe a yard. Yeah, they had to, they had to stack in there in the middle of that time. They saw it coming. Number 32, Braden Hutchins on the tackle. That's number two for him. Dalen Thomas coming into the ball game, back into the game for the Scotties. Boy, that was a great move by the Baylor. <laughs> Graylin Thomas down here about the five yard line, boy, he just uh, 10 yard line. He just juked him and got him going one way and he went the other. Second down nine for the Scotties. They're in Barron County territory at the 49 yard line. Jesse under center and fumbles the snap, picks it up though, and Easton going to make positive yardage out of this thing. Yeah, he's he's going to get it inside the 45 down to the 44. He got a lot out of nothing there. Looks like number eight again on the bottom of that pile. He's piling them up. That's number eight for uh, Dakota Wade. Gain of five yards. It'll be third down and four for the Scotties at the Barron County 44. And you're in questionable four down territory here, Larry. What do you think? You're across midfield. But hopefully you pick it up here on third down. Don't have to worry about it. Yeah, hopefully. Or if it's third and fourth and one, maybe. Bull and Neal in the backfield. Thomas the wing back, left side. Give it off to Thomas, and he's going to get hit in the backfield and gets away from the first tackler, will not get away from the second wave. Uh, and it's going to be a loss of yardage, and I think this may yeah. force Glasgow's hand to punt the football yeah, away. We'll not, see. That's not what you wanted there. Number 50 on the bottom of that pile. That would be Chris DeVore, his first tackle. He's a senior, six foot. It's a loss of two back to the 46-yard line, and the offense is staying on the field here. Oh, my. Big gamble on fourth down and six in a 21-all ball game. Scotty's going for it from the Barron County 46-yard line. Well, the Barron County is really putting everybody right in the middle of the field. Jesse under center. Here comes Thomas in motion to the left side. No, uh, they're going to try to draw Jesse him offside. Jesse trying to draw him off sides, and he cannot. A flag goes down for delay of game, but did Glasgow get a timeout first? Yeah, I think so. They did, yep, Scotty's got a timeout first, so. 
We'll take a timeout as well. 6-12 to go in this ball game. We're tied at 21 back after a 30-second break on WCLU Sports. Want to slash your cable bill? Save over $20 a month with MyStream TV from SCRTC, the savings alternative with the same great channel lineup you've always been accustomed to. Packages as low as $85 even include internet, at least 200 meg. This is a no-brainer. No more cable boxes, just an app. And you even get an extra stream. Wait till we show you catch-up TV. Compare your current service to the new MyStream TV from SCRTC, 678-2111. Call and save today. Well, the offense remains on the field after that timeout, so Glasgow is apparently going to try to go for this on fourth down and six from the Trojans' 46-yard line. Hmm. If this gamble does not pay off, you're really counting on your defense to come up big. This could be a ball game right here. Jesse in shotgun, kneel to his left, two wideouts each way. Easton has the snap. Under pressure. Rolling out to the right side, in trouble. Now comes back to the left side of the field, trying to keep the play alive. Easton needs to let go of it, and he's going to be sacked. A flag goes down, most likely going to be holding. Yeah, Ball hold. popped out. Barron County recovered the fumble. And let's see what's going to happen here with the flag. I believe they called it down right here. We're going to have During the play, a legal block below the waist. That penalty's going to be declined. And now Glasgow, with the loss of yardage, is going to turn the ball over on downs at their own 49-yard line. So Barron County only has to go 49 yards here to take the lead with 5.59 to go in the ball game. We're tied at 21. Spillman sets up under center. Offset eye behind him. Kearney the fullback. Sewell the tailback. They'll pitch it to Sewell around the left side to the short side of the field. And he's going to get to the 43-yard line, it looks like, with a gain of about six. Looks like Mason Arms is the man that ran him out over there. That's tackle number 10 for him. Six-yard pickup. It'll be second down and four. Game of six on the play. <laughs> second down, four. Kearney and Sewell again in an offset eye. Wide out to the right side. Give it to Sewell. Goes up the middle with it, and he is going to have a first down down to around and the 37-yard line. Number 18, Kellen Stone on the tackle, number three for him. Clock at 534 and counting here in the fourth quarter. Tied at 21. Spillman under center. Kearney. And Sewell in the backfield in the broken eye formation. Give it off to Sewell. Around the left side he goes. And he is going to be out of bounds right at the 35. Kellen Stone again got him out over there on the sidelines. Gain of two. Four. Sorry, Larry. Gain of two. It'll be second down and eight. Trojans have an opportunity to run a lot of time off the clock here, too. With just 5.18 to go, they can score with very little time on the clock. It'll make things tough on the Scotties as hard of a time as the offense has had getting going tonight. Spillman under center. The back's in a broken eye once again. Spillman will turn and hand it off to Sewell up the middle, and he's going to get stuffed this time. Might have gotten a yard. I don't know. Yeah, that was Mason again. Boy, he's had a heck of a night defensive. Let's tackle number 11. Gain of a yard. It'll be third down and seven. Under yeah. five minutes remaining now. Big third down here. We'll see what Barron does then. If we could stop them here. 
I'd be shocked if they didn't go for it if they don't get it right here. Trips to the near side, a single wide out to the left. Now a second wide out joins them over on the left side. Spielman gonna hand it off on a jet sweep and Ain't nothing ready. doing there. Cam Johnson. That was Logan Truitt on the carry for Barron County. It'll be fourth down and eight as Truitt's gonna lose a yard. Third tackle for Cam. He just got him around the shoulder pads and drug him backwards. So we'll see if the Trojans can convert on fourth and eight. Scotties were unable to convert on fourth and six just a moment ago. Yeah. Ball at the Glasgow 35-yard line. We're at 4.06 to play. You got to throw it here, I would think. Got to watch Spillman on the move, too. Two receivers left, one to the right. Spillman in shotgun. Handles a high shotgun snap. Spillman has time. Now flushed out. Now going to be hey. back at the 40-yard yeah. line by David Dale. Boy, nice play, David Dale. He chased him down and finally looked like he was going to get rid of it, and he chased him down and finally got him. So both teams go for it on a third, fourth down and don't make it. Both teams lost yardage on their fourth down attempt, and now Glasgow will take over at the Barron County 49-yard line. With 3.27 to play, game tied at 21. What a flip. See if the offense can get something going here. We have an official timeout. Three, four, seven. Three, four, seven. on the clock, the guys. Like seven. So they put 20 seconds back on the clock. All right, Scotties need to get something done here offensively. Let's get down at least in field goal range. Wesley Travis got a nice leg. I saw him kick one from about 35. Bull and Thomas, the wing backs. Neil, the running back. Crowder and Martin, the wide outs. Jesse under center. Thomas in motion. And Jesse and Bull run into each other. Easton going to make something out of this, 45-40. And Easton going to run out of bounds about the 36-yard line, and now a flag comes down at the end of the play. Personal foul. What? What in the world are we doing out here? Defensive player. I apologize for our microphone. I have no idea what's going on with that tonight, but it's a defensive, it's a penalty against the Scotties. I wasn't even sure what the indication was, but it's going to move the football back into Barron County territory at the 48 yard line. Hmm. First down and 12. Boy, the Scotties have had some big plays called back by penalty tonight, Larry. The penalties are killing us. First down, 13. Yeah, it's first and 13, not first and 12. My bad. Ball to 48. Jesse off a couple of fakes, looking to throw. Has a man open. Campbell caught it. Oh, dropped at the 32-yard line. He was wide open, and he oh dropped the football. My. Right in the bread basket, too. That's one you want to – that one that you just stand there waiting for, and you want to catch it and run, and you want to run before you do catch it, and that's what happened. Well, Glasgow has just struggled on offense tonight. It has just been a struggle. 21 all, 3.32 to go in the ball game. Second down 13, Jesse under center. Baxter split, Jesse, a couple of fakes, wants to throw. Looking for Bull, and this one is nearly intercepted. It was the same play. Glasgow yeah. went back to the well, but Barron County had that one played much better. Yeah, they had that one smelled out right there. Now it'll be third down and 13 for the Scotties. Yeah. 
Boy, you don't want to take anything away from Barron County, but Scotties have shot themselves in the foot over and over tonight. You know, Barron's played a nice they game have. defensively. They have. Baxter split. Thomas the wing back on the left side. He'll go in motion to the right. Going to give this off to Neal at the middle. Gavin going to get to the 48-yard line. Scotty's trying to catch Barron County off guard there on third and 13. Went for the running play. Yeah, Waylon Clemens on the tackle. That will be number four for him tonight. And Glasgow will go for it again, this time on fourth and eight <laughs> from the Barron County 47-yard line. Uh. Two receivers right, two to the left. Jesse in shotgun. 2.47 to go. Here's the snap. Easton looking. Pass is going to be incomplete. Mm -hmm. Bad pass that time. It was thrown behind Martin, and the Scotties will turn the ball over on downs. Now the defense must go back to work. First and 10 Trojans. They'll get it at their own 47-yard line with 2.40 to play in a 21-all ball game. First down 10 Trojans at their own 47-yard line. All right, got to hold one more time. Backs in an eye formation. Spillman under center. Going to pitch it to Sewell around the left side, trying to get to the corner. He does. He's got midfield, and he's going to have a first down as he dives out near the 40-yard line. Number 18, I believe that was Kellen Stone again, fifth tackle. Pickup of 13. Two eleven to go. Twenty-one all. Offset eye in the backfield behind Spillman. Going to pitch it to Sewell again. Same play to the short side of the field, and he's going to go down after a gain of about three. It looks like. Looks like Mason Arms again. Tackle number twelve. Barring a turnover, probably the best Glasgow is going to be able to hope for here is overtime. We're down to 146 to go. We're tied at 21. Yeah, that's the best we're going to be able to hope for unless we get a turnover and take it to the half. Second down eight. Second down eight here. Sewell again dots the offset eye. Going to give it off to the fullback, Kearney. He's going to get tripped up just about as soon as he took the handoff. Yeah, he will manage to get a yard or so, yeah, I think. Yeah, that was Mason Arms got in there and got a hand on him. And then number 33, Jacob Brunson, fished, finished him off. And Barron County going to call a timeout with 119 to go in the game. It was a one-yard gain for Kearney, so it'll be third down and seven when we come back to action here. Timeout. And while we have a break here on our uh, live video stream on YouTube, we're going to bring you the fan cam brought to you by South Central Rural Telephone Cooperative. Take a look at what's going on in the stands here. Big, big crowd on hand tonight at Hank Roy Stadium for this first meeting between Glasgow and Barron County in football since the 2016 season. And it's been a good one. Glasgow 21, Barron County 21, 119 to play in the contest. Trojans have the ball, third down and six. They're at the Glasgow 36-yard line. And Glasgow's going to have to burn a timeout. I think Kellen Stone was having an equipment issue. And Jeff wants him in the ball game, so they burn a timeout to make sure that uh, he can get that fixed. Scotty's now down to one timeout. Barron County has two. Been a good ball game, Larry. Scotty's, I don't think, have played their best. But again, I don't want to take anything from Barron County because they have played a 
very good ball game here tonight. They've had a good game plan coming in. They did, had a good game plan offensively, and I, I'm surprised at uh, how inept our offense has been so far tonight. I, the Bar I guess Barron's defense has something to do with that, but we, we have dropped passes and just too many, too many p penalties in crucial situations. Nearly 100 yards in penalties tonight, Larry. Yeah, 95 yards in penalties yeah, for the Scotties. That's not going to win you many games doing that, especially when he takes touchdowns off the board. Third down and six. Spillman under center. Backs in an offset eye. Going to pitch this to Sewell. He'll try to get around the right corner. And he is going to get to the 31, maybe the 32. He's going to be a yard or two shy of the first down with 108 to play. Number eight, Dalen Thomas on that tackle. That's number four for him. Fourth and short. Ball at the just inside the 32, so about a yard and a half to go for the first down here for Barron County as we go under a minute remaining. you got to watch them now. They may just raise up and throw this thing. Backs in an offset eye, or actually a straight eye formation this time. Spillman under center trying to draw the Scotties off sides. And they do not jump, and they'll call a timeout. So good discipline that time by Glasgow. So each team now down to its final timeout. There's only 38 seconds to play here. It's fourth down in about a yard and a half. Yeah, you figure if they get this, then they're going to start opening it up, and they'll try to go for the touchdown probably. They have, don't have a lot of enough time to really put it on the ground a lot unless they break a big one. So this is a crucial down here for the Scotties. This is make it or break it right here. It's a tough down in distance here for Glasgow to defend. Barron County can pretty much do anything in the playbook on yeah. this down at fourth down in a yard and a half or so. But Spillman, obviously you got to watch him and his mobility. Or you may give it to the fullback on the quick hitter up the middle. Yeah, got to make tackles. So you got to tackle right here. We've missed we had one play where we missed three tackles and we got in the end zone. So here we go. Fourth and a yard and a half here for the Trojans. With 38 seconds to go in a 21 all ball game. Spillman going to keep it himself around the left side. Gets away from the first tackler and he is going to be very close to a first down. I don't know. We'll see. It's really close. Mason Arms at the tackle again, number 13. Kellen Stone disrupted the play initially but did not make the tackle, and it is not going to be a first down. He had to make the 30, and they're spotting that ball at the 31. It is a stop for the right. Scotty defense. All right. Twenty-nine point four seconds to go. So now, does Glasgow just play for overtime? They only have one timeout left with twenty-nine point four remaining. First down and ten, Glasgow at their own thirty-one yard line. They'll take over first and ten at their own thirty-one. I don't know about you, but I'd try to get it into Rico's hands at least one time and let him try to do something. You know, he hadn't touched the ball very much tonight. Jesse is in shotgun, so he does not look like going to take a knee or anything. Two wide outs each way. Uh, and a start. whistle at the snap. The Illegal substitution, substitution on, on Barry County. County. And as Jerry Ream announces it over the public address system, the call against Barron County gets a Bronx cheer from the Glasgow crowd. They don't feel like that the officiating has been even here tonight, it doesn't sound like. But. Well, I know there's been a lot of holding penalties called, and, I, of course, you'd have to look at the film. I guess you can see it on TV a little bit better than what we'll see it here, but check them out. First and five. From the 34 or 36 yard line, Jesse in shotgun to throw. And I don't know who that was intended for. It was nobody in the area. I mean, well, Jared Martin, Martin was in the area, Martin but it was, was nowhere there. near him. Well, that set me up a screen right here. Get it to Rico on the, on the flanker screen or something right over the middle. Easton Jesse has had a very tough night. Now, granted, his receivers have dropped some footballs, but Easton just three of 12 on the night for 38 yards. 
But he has had probably at least four passes dropped, I would say, if not more. Oh, yes. Two wide outs each way. Jesse in shotgun. Easton with a snap. Steps up, now going to be sacked with 19 seconds to go. And if you're Glasgow, I think you probably just play from over, for overtime from this point on. Yeah, Clemens is the man that made the tackle and the sack. Waylon Clemens, fourth tackle on the night for him. Scotty Zarr going to let the clock run out. And for the first time in a long time, I don't even know when the last time was that Scotty's went to overtime. I can't remember it. And I don't have uh, any information on that, but we are going to go to overtime here. So we are going to stay right here. So the way this works is there will be a coin toss. And whoever wins the coin toss has the option to either go on defense or offense first. And each team gets four downs from the 10-yard line to try to score, and you just keep going until somebody wins the ball game. We don't have a two-point conversion I deal think, in high school, do we? I think after the first two, I think if you're tied after the first two overtimes, you have, you have to, to go for two. two. I believe, Larry, and I that, cannot. That's, a, that's the way it is in college. I cannot remember for sure, but I believe that's correct. I may be wrong. Should have brushed up on my overtime rules, but it's been so long since the Scotties have had an overtime game. So we are tied at 21 here. Oh, we flipped the coin. Oh, microphone, just something wrong. Just don't know what's up with the microphone tonight. What would you do, go defense first? You go defense first. Yeah. That way you know what you have to do on offense. Yeah, that's what I would do. I knew something. There's the coin toss brought to you by Walbert Trucking, by the way. We're going we to have this no idea field. what happened. We're going down to the end zone to our left, closest to the school. So Barron County won the coin toss, and they'll go on defense first. Garcia's grill stats through regulation here, 12 first downs for the Scotties, 11 for Barron County, 164 rushing for Glasgow, 38 passing, 202 total yards. Barron County 112 rushing, 154 passing, 266 total yards. Trojans still have the only turnover in the game. That was an interception. Scotty's have been penalized, big stat here, nine times for 95 <laughs> yards tonight. Barron County five penalties for 40 yards. Glasgow's had the ball 21 minutes and 14 seconds. Barron County 24 minutes and 36 seconds. I knew we were in trouble when I saw you bring the referee thing in. We had seven officials on the field. Yeah, we – yeah. <laughs> and we normally have five. Normally have five, I'm pretty sure, yeah. yeah I do something when you're going to be good. So here we go. First down and goal to go for the Scotties in the first overtime period from the 10-yard line. Wing T set with a wing back each way. Here comes Campbell in motion. Again, we'll get off to the middle to Gavin Neal, and he is going to score on the first play. Touchdown, Scotty. And that is actually Gavin Neal's first rushing touchdown of the season. And Glasgow is going to go for two right off the bat, Larry. You're kidding. Uh -uh. Well, this would be a big, it's a big gamble, but it's a big play if you can make it. Oh, okay. Got to make it. Jesse under center. Thomas and Bull the wing backs. Put Bull in motion. Jesse keeps it around the left side, and he's going to get in for the two-point conversion. Yeah. Brought to you by Walbert Trucking. Yeah, that's a big play. It was a big gamble, but it worked. And that last touchdown for the Scotties was brought to you by Elmore Realty and Auction. So Glasgow up 29-21. And now Barron County will get 
four downs from the 10 yard line to try to tie this ball game up and send us into a second overtime period. So it's a 10 yard touchdown run for Gavin Neal and a two point run for Easton Jesse. All right, see if the defense can hold right here. We've got to hold on the touchdown. And if they score, we've got to get a hold on the two-pointer. Kearney and Sewell in a broken eye formation in the backfield. Wide out to the right side. Going to pitch this to Sewell around the right side. He's going to break a tackle, and he's going to be down around the five-yard line. That's a good run, Sewell. Good runner. Mason Arms made the tackle. That's tackle number 14. 14 tackles tonight for Mason. That's what I've got him. I believe he may be our player of the game. We shall see, but hard to overlook that. Second and goal from the five. High formation again. Offset to the left this time. It's a keeper up the middle oh. for Spillman, and he'll get very short yardage, maybe a yard if that. He just tried to go with a quarterback sneak that time. The Scotties yeah. brought him down. That looks like Cam Johnson on the bottom of that pile there. Fourth tackle for him. So third and goal as they will move the football to the four-yard line, a pickup of one yard. <laughs> Spillman under center. Kearney and Sewell and offset eye. And now a timeout taken by Glasgow. So that will be Glasgow's only timeout during this first overtime period. We'll stay right one, here we'll once get again. One extra in overtime. I think you get one, one extra, extra in each overtime period, I believe. This is, Larry, this is teaching me a lesson. Yeah. i got to go back and brush up on my high school overtime rules. It's, it's been so long well, since we uh, played an overtime game. I could probably tell you if I had my record book, but I don't have it with me. I don't know whether I did it on these. So it's 29-21, Glasgow in front here. Third and goal from the four for Berrien County as we go back to action. Spillman under center. Going to give this to Sewell up the middle. He is pushing the pile, and he is in for the touchdown. Alex Sewell takes the ball in with a score from four yards out. It's not illegal. It's a touchdown for Barron County. So now the Trojans must go for two to try to tie the ball game up. Ball is set at the three-yard line in high school. When you go for two. What was that, a four-yard run? A four-yard run for Austin Sewell. It's now 29-27, Glasgow. Everybody on their feet here at Hank Roy Stadium. Scotty defense can win it right here with a stop. Or Barron County can send us to a second overtime with a two-point conversion. Spillman under center. Kearney, the lone setback. Sewell and Cox are the wing backs, and now they shift three men over to the right side, and now Barron County going to burn their timeout here in the first overtime. Larry, you want to predict what the Trojans are? You're looking for the last overtime game, aren't you? I'm looking, but I haven't had any luck yet. Ladies and gentlemen, this game is brought to you by Don Franklin Family of Dealership with 27 locations all over Kentucky. They offer the largest and Mr. Joe Perry has sent me the uh, overtime rules, but that is a lot of reading, which I do not have time to get in. I appreciate it, Joe, but I'm right. not sure exactly what I'm looking for. Here you go, Joe. 2007. Allen County Scottsville overtime 
and we won 20 to 14. 2007, the last time yep. Glasgow played an overtime That's game. That's the last one I've got on my Wow, finger. I knew it had been a long time. All right, here we go. Two-point try coming here from Barron County to try to send us into a second overtime. If the Scotty's going to stop, the ball game's over. Sewell, a wing back on the right side. Moore, a wing back on the left side. Spielman. Wants to throw under pressure, looking into the end zone. It is going to be caught for the two-point try, and we'll go to another overtime. Who caught that? It's Jackson Bird, Bird. the man who has killed the Scotties all night long, Larry. Jackson Bird, the score is tied. We'll go into another overtime series. This time it will be Barron County. Overtime. Glasgow has chosen to be on defense first, so it will be Barron County ball first and ten. This time it will be Barron County who will go on offense for the first time. We're tied at 29. It's a good job by Spillman that time. He was under pressure, kept the play alive long enough to find, just kind of lobbed it up. And Bird went and got it in the end zone. Yeah, we had a man right there. He just didn't get back to him in time. First and goal from the 10 for the Trojans as we begin the second overtime period. Spillman under center. Back to the arm formation. Spillman to throw, rolling out to the right side. Under pressure and gets rid of it. And that's got to be grounding. Nobody in the area. They're going to call it incomplete. My goodness, where is the receiver? Uh, boy, these officials, what are they looking at? He threw that ball just straight out of bounds in the grasp of a defender. I don't know, Larry. Maybe there was a receiver over there that I didn't I see, didn't but see I sure one. didn't see anyone in the area. <laughs> I didn't see one either. Second down and goal from the 10. Second down, goal to go. Spillman under center. Back to the nine formation. Give it off to Sewell up the middle. And he is going to be taken down after a gain of one, maybe two. It'll be third down and goal. Jacob Brunson on the tackle. That's number that Pick up a him. two. That's number six for Jacob. Third and goal from the eight. Game tied at 29. We're in the second overtime period here at Hank Roy Stadium. Very few people in their seats. Most everybody on their feet here, anticipating how this one's going to turn out. Spillman in shotgun. Back to his right is Sewell. Fake the handoff there. Spillman wants to throw. Rolling out to the right side. Pass is going to be incomplete. And now an interesting decision coming up for Barron County. And now... Now a penalty going to be called, and who do we have? Is it going to be on the Trojans or the Scotties? I don't know. Mason Arms is mixed up with somebody. I couldn't tell who the uh, player was for Barron. Why in the world do you do anything that, in that, that situation? That occurred way after the play. Mason Arms is coming out of the ball game, and Jeff Garman is very upset with him. So we'll see what they call. The officials are huddled up talking about it. Hopefully it's a offsetting penalty. Taking a while for the officials to sort this thing out. Well, they're taking a long discussion. Now Mason going back into yeah. the ball game. I, Mason had to be before he doesn't do that no, stuff. No, Mason's a level-headed kid now. I don't know what could have happened right there. We'll see if our microphone can pick it up here. Doesn't look like it. Teams. We had personal foul, unsportsmanlike on Barron County. And personal foul and sports like on Glasgow, so you replay the down. Yeah. So Barron County will be third down and goal once again from the eight-yard line. 
It should be fourth down, right? That was a dead ball foul. Oh, it's foul. a dead ball foul. That's right, Larry. It yeah, should it should be, be fourth, fourth down. down. That's right. Not a dead ball penalty, so it will be fourth down if the official ruling they, they, holds. They've got the fourth down over on the box right okay, now. Okay, it is fourth down. So now an interesting decision for Barron County. Do they go for it here? Do they put it? No, they are going to say it's third down. So it, apparently not a dead ball foul. It will be third down and goal from the eight. Third and goal from the eight. Trojans get a redo on third down here. Spillman in shotgun. Sewell to his left. Spillman rolling out to the left. Going to turn it upfield. He's going to try to get into the end zone, and he does. Sure. And the offsetting oh, penalty gives Barron County a New redo, line. and they score. It's now 35-29, Barron County. And they will go for two. Barron County takes a 35-29 lead. What was that? Eight-yard run? Going for two. No! No! And... Illegal flag procedure. is down. I don't think they got set, did they? I don't think so. I think it's illegal procedure. They gave him a timeout. Oh, my goodness. Wow, boy, Barron County has gotten a lot of breaks tonight. <laughs> <laughs> they've, got, they've got every break in the book. <laughs> they gave Barron County a timeout before they called the penalty, they say. The flag hit the floor. The flag hit the field. And then they called the timeout. Wow. Yeah, I knew he was in trouble when we had seven. <laughs> Too many eyes. So the timeout was granted, so Barron County has used their one timeout here in the second overtime period. No All right, best thing you hope for here to stop the two-point conversion. Mojo, it'll be the last time you'll be So, go for the two-point try here for the Trojans from the three-yard line to try to make it an eight-point lead. Spillman now a whistle. What do we have now? What do you call? over here on this side of the field. Offsides on Glasgow, so move it a yard and a half closer. Oh, my goodness. How many times we we're going to shoot ourselves in the foot. So now the Trojans only have to go a yard and a half. Watch a quarterback sneak right here. Mm -hmm. Spillman will do just that. And did he get in? No, they already spotted him. Don't you already spotted him. You ran out and spotted him. Still no signal. Did he get in? Mason Arm says he didn't. No signal from the No good. No he is good. not in. No. no good. So Scotty stopped the two point play. It's a big play there by the defense. All they needed was a yard and a half, and Spielman was not able to get it despite his uh, discussion right now with the official. He thought he got in there, but the official said he did not. So now Glasgow yeah, must a score a touchdown and the get the extra point for the win. We got a break. Jesse under center. Bull and Thomas the wing backs. Neil the running back. A wide out each way. Jesse gives to Thomas. Turns it upfield. He's got the five and runs over a tackler down near the one yard line. It'll be second and goal from the one. Boy, good job that time by Dalen Thomas. He lowered the shoulder and barreled into a Barron County tackle. They're going to spot him down at the two. 
actually. That so it'll be an eight-yard run. Tate Spillman made the tackle. Down, that would be his goal. third of the night. Yes, the under center. Again, same formation. There's a snap. Quarterback sneak Touchdown. for Jesse, and he is in. Touchdown, Scotties. And we're tied at 35. And Glasgow will send in the kicking team for the victory here if they can make it. Wesley Travis did miss one earlier in the ball game. But he's one only yard. missed two all year long. It's a two-yard run, Larry, two yard run. for Easton Jesse. Wesley Travis on for the victory. It's a good snap. Hold is down. Kick is up. And the kick is yes. good. And Glasgow wins. Scotties win it by a score of 36 to 35 over the Barron County Trojans. What a ball game here at Hank Roy Stadium to resume this rivalry between the Scotties and the Trojans. Glasgow overcomes 10 penalties for 96 yards and a number of drop passes. Scotties will stay undefeated and go to 5-0 on the year. Barron County will suffer its second consecutive loss, falling to three and two. All right, sorry about that. I had to, uh, we had to look at something to give them the player of the game here so they can announce it over the PA system. But Glasgow, a one-point winner, 36-35 in double overtime over the Barron County Trojans. All right, so now we will come back with the Don Franklin Auto postgame show where we will uh, take a look at the Garcia's Grill sizzling stats. We'll have our Phillips IGA player of the game, and we'll also talk with Glasgow head coach Jeff Garman as well. The Scotties win 36-35 in double overtime over Barron County. We're back after a four-minute timeout on WCLU Sports. This has been Glasgow Scotty's Football. Stay tuned for the Don Franklin Auto Post Game Show on WCLU. Have you injured yourself playing a sport or exercising? Sports medicine experts at TJ Regional Health are trained to get you back on the road to recovery. Whether you're dealing with sprains, fractures, knee and shoulder injuries, or other common injuries, our goal is to prevent illness and injury in active individuals of all ages and help prevent future problems to maximize your performance. Find out more at tjregionalhealth.org slash rehab. Patients first, team always. TJ Rehabilitation Services. Monticello Bank first opened its doors in 1895 as a single office in Monticello, Kentucky. Today, there are 21 NBC locations across the Commonwealth. From home loans to commercial lending, Monticello Bank offers a wide variety of convenient financial services and competitive rates from local people you know and trust. Visit them at 1434 Happy Valley Road in Glasgow and let them help make the financial side of your life a little easier. Monticello Bank, where people matter. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. We know there's a big difference between being in a community and being part of the community. That's why here in Glasgow, we cheer on the Scotties. We work hard every day to make a positive impact on the community we call home. Behind our golden arches, we strive daily to serve delicious food and treats. If you could only smell this McDonald's ad, you smell how delicious this burger and fries really are. Join our McTeam. To learn how, text KY209 to 38000. Benefits include a sign-on bonus up to $500. Phillips IGA, a family market since 1960. Visit the butcher shop where you'll find fresh cuts of fine meats from an in-store butcher and delicious hamburger ground fresh, plus a fresh selection of garden vegetables and fruits. They proudly carry legacy dairy milk produced right in their hometown of Highsville. Find your favorite national brands. Download the Phillips IGA app to start saving. View their weekly sales ad or simply shop online. Phillips IGA and Butcher Shop. Friendly faces and fair prices. Located on Highway 70 in Highsville. Kentucky Farm Bureau agents wear a lot of hats. They're coaches. Volunteers. Church members. Neighbors. Someone who's there when you need them. 
especially when you need them most. That may be a lot of hats, but they're all the perfect fit. Kentucky Farm Bureau, big on commitment. Hey son, what you doing? Daddy, I'm going on a dealership one day. All right, I'll dream with you. From one small dream to over 25 dealerships in the state of Kentucky, we have set out to provide Kentuckians with reliable vehicles and the best customer service for over 50 years. This may have started with a simple dream, but our dedication to our customers will go on for generations. Glasgow Scotty's Football on WCLU 103.1 FM and AM 1490. And video streaming free at WCLURadio.com and on the Glasgow Scotties and WCLU YouTube channels. Glasgow Scotty's Football, brought to you by Don Franklin Auto, Walbert Trucking, South Central Bank, HVAC Services, South Central Rural Telecommunications Cooperative, Garcia's Grill, Elmore Realty and Auction, Hardee's, TJ Regional Health, McDonald's, Monticello Bank, Phillips IGA, and Kentucky Farm Bureau agent Joe Myers. Standard expectations, play to it every plate. It's time for the Don Franklin Auto post-game wrap-up. Well, I don't think we could have had any better game to bring back this football series between Glasgow and Barron Counties. The Scotties end up winning in double overtime by a score of 36 to 35. Larry, got to give both teams great credit. I think Barron County came in here with a great, great game plan and performed very well. Glasgow had to overcome 96 yards of penalties and several drop passes in the ball game. But the Scotties do what they had to do at the end of the ball game. Defense got a big stop on the two-point conversion for Barron County after their second touchdown, and the offense did what they had to do and got that uh, winning touchdown and then the winning extra point by Wesley Travis. Yeah, everybody did Everybody did what they needed to do there, especially in the second half and in the overtime period. But, uh, you know, Glasgow just offensively out of, just out of sync right from the start of the ball game. Uh, the big play offense, we just it didn't materialize tonight. We had a couple of good good plays called back by by penalties. Uh, and, you know, the penalties were the biggest thing, and then the drop passes were second for our offense. But Barron County had a very good uh, very good game plan offensively. They 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 wanted to keep the football away from Glasgow and didn't let their offense on the field, and they did a good very good job of that in the first half. Uh, you know, after they gotten beaten by Monroe County last week, maybe looking forward to this game or something. And uh, but they were ready to play tonight. You got to give them a lot of credit. And this game was a whole lot closer than I thought it was going to be. Yep, Barron County proved themselves certainly be a very good football team here tonight. But the Scotties come out with the 36-35 victory in double overtime. Now our Garcia's Grill sizzling stats here on the Don Franklin Auto Post Game Show. And with that, we'll turn things over to Larry and Bruce. Larry. All right, Joe, uh, first half, we had some scoring done in the first half. Didn't get a lot done in that second half, but Barron County uh, opened the thing up. They took the opening uh, kickoff and uh, took it on their own 27-yard line. Uh, they went on a five-play 73-yard drive to 241 off the clock. Jackson Bird, who was our MVP, Barron County's MVP tonight, caught a 58-yard touchdown pass from Tate Spillman. A uh, mix-up in the defensive secondary by Glasgow somewhere or another. He was just standing out there wide open. All he had to do was catch it and run it in the end zone. Hadley Adams kicked the extra point, and Barron led 7 to nothing, 9-19 in the first quarter. Glasgow again would punt three and out on their first possession. But uh, on the second play from scrimmage, uh, Jarek Martin would intercept a, uh, a pass by uh, Tate Spillman, and he would return that pass that the interception, 37 yards for a touchdown. Wesley Travis uncharacteristically missed the extra point, so Barron County still led 7-6 to six at 7.07 of the first quarter. But Barron would take the, the next kickoff on their own 17-yard line, and they put on a monster drive, 14 plays, 83 yards, took 8 minutes and 45 seconds off the clock. Jackson Bird with his second touchdown pass of the first quarter, and 18 uh, – of the first half, I should say, 18-yard touchdown pass from Tate Spillman. Uh, the kick was good again by Hadley Adams, and Barron County led 14 to six with 10:22 to go in the uh, second quarter. 
Glasgow again would punt on their next possession, could get nothing done. Barron County and Glasgow's defense held on their next possession and made them punt. And finally, the Scotties got a little life. They got the football on their own 26-yard line with 7.22 to go in the second quarter. From that point, they went on a nine-play, 74-yard drive, took 5.05 off the clock. Uh, they used the wing tee and a little bit of the spread, not much. Uh, Rico Crowder had a great one-handed catch in that uh, in that series, and they got down inside the one, uh, to the one-yard line. Mason Arms would take it over for the uh, touchdown. He is Glasgow's MVP tonight. Uh, and we went for two after missing the extra point on the previous touchdown. Uh, it was a run by Cameron Bull for the uh, two-point conversion, so the score was tied 14-all, and that uh, Barron County would get the football back one more time before half, but uh, they did not try to score, and time would run out. So the Scotties would get the football back coming out of third quarter, and they did just exactly what they needed to do. They took the opening, the kickoff at the 32-yard line, and he went on an eight-play, 67-yard drive, took 5-10 off the clock. Dalen Thomas with a 20-yard touchdown run for the TD. Uh, Wesley Davis kicked the extra point, and Glasgow led 21-14, their first lead of the night, with seven minutes to go in the third quarter. Barron County uh, didn't lay down, though. They came right back as they took the ensuing kickoff on their own 35-yard line as the ball went out of bounds on the kickoff. Uh, they took over at 6.50 of the third quarter. Another nice drive for Barron. Nine plays, 65 yards, to 422 off the clock. Tate Spillman with a 17-yard touchdown run uh, for the TD. Uh, kick was good by Hadley Adams again, and we were tied 21 all. That's how the third quarter would end. Fourth quarter would get nothing done offensively. Either team, we had punt. Glasgow punted, Barron County punted. Glasgow would lose it on downs. Barron County would lose it on downs. Glasgow lost it on downs. Barron County lost it on downs. And they were going for it on fourth down on these on these series where they were losing it on downs, and nobody had very much success doing it, doing any of it. So uh, Glasgow would get the football back at the end, and they took a knee and uh, played for overtime at that point. Well, the first overtime, Barron County won the toss, so Glasgow got to go on offense first. And uh, took and take them one play to put it in the end zone. Gavin Neal put it in from 10 yards out for the touchdown. Uh, we went for two, surprisingly. I don't know what the thinking was, but uh, it worked out well. Easton Jesse, uh, a run for the uh, two-point conversion, and Glasgow led 29-21. So Barron would get it in the first overtime on their time to get it. Austin Sewell went over from four yards out for the touchdown for Barron County. Uh, they also had to go for two this time, because Glasgow did, and uh, it was good also. It was a little old looping pass in the end zone that Jackson Bird came down with it for the two-point conversion, and we were tied at that point 29-29 after the first overtime. So Barron County would get the football on the uh, in the second overtime. They would go on offense first. Tate Spillman uh, would go over from eight yards out for the touchdown. They went for two, as Glasgow did on their first series, but it was no good. The referees didn't give it to them. They said they got in, or their player did, but uh, the referee said no. So it was a six-point lead, 35-29 in favor of Barron at that point. And Glasgow would line up and go on offense, and they would score the touchdown. Easton Jesse with a two-yard run for the TD. Wesley Travis came in and uh, oh, reliable. I only missed two all year. He kicked this one right straight down the middle, and Glasgow won it by a score of 36, 35, and two overtimes. This being the 35th meeting between these two schools, and Glasgow runs the record down to 28 and seven uh, in their series against Barron County. For tackles tonight, first uh, for uh, Barron County, they kept uh, they had. A number of tackles, but uh, they didn't have as many as they could. They kept the football a lot in the first half, and, and Glasgow didn't have they didn't have need to tackle anybody. Braxton Carnes with uh, five tackles on the night. Uh, Tate Spillman had three. Dalton Garman with one. They were led in tackles tonight by number eight, Dakota Wade. He had eight tackles in the game. He is a uh, junior. Uh, Tristan Muse had two tackles on the night. Jonathan Wilson with two and had a sack of the quarterback. Jordan Harris with one. Jackson Reese with two. Uh, Braden Houchins had two on the night. Braylon Crimmins a, a good night. Five tackles and a sack of the quarterback. 
Brooks uh, Browning had one, Colton Thomas with one, and I had Chris DeVore with one tackle on the night. For Glasgow in the game, Rico Crowder with two tackles, and both of those came on kickoff. Trey Smith with one on the kickoff. Gavin Neal had two. David Dale with a uh, good night for him, four tackles and a sack with the quarterback. Uh, Dalen Thomas with four tackles. Jack Martin didn't have a tackle, but he did have that big interception that he ran back for a touchdown. Uh, Lucas Christian, one tackle. Kellen Stone, five tackles on the night. Ryan Morgan with five tackles. And the man of the night is Mason Arms. I've got him with 14 big tackles on the night for the senior. And, of course, he was Glasgow's MVP. Uh, Cash Wells with one tackle. Jacob Brunson, a good night. Six tackles for Drake, Jason, Jacob Brunson. Max Lee had two. Cam Johnson had four on the night. Frankie Cianci with one. KV Hunt Matthew with one. And Catavion Fryer had one on the night for the Scotties. So uh, Glasgow wins it here tonight. Double overtime, 36 to 35. All right, Larry, thank you very much. As we continue here on the Don Franklin Auto postgame show, uh, we'll get Bruce to give us the offensive numbers in just a moment. But Coach Jeff Garman has joined us here in the press box. And, uh, Jeff, what a way to bring this uh, series back here between Glasgow and Barron County in football, a 36-35 double overtime win. First, I just, I guess, want to get your overall thoughts on how this ball game went for you guys. Good football game. Good football team. I thought both teams played well. I thought both teams showed some resiliency in the game. And, uh, you know, I'm just proud of our guys. We hung in there and, uh, and, and, and come out with a win tonight. Offense, Jeff, in the first half uh, only had the ball for 17 plays. Barron County dominated time of possession. Uh, but uh, you guys got a big score, I thought, there at the end of the first half to kind of give yourself some momentum to tie this ball game up. How big was that going into halftime, you think? It's a big play. It's a big play, and it got momentum going, and we had the ball start in the second half. I just thought, you know, uh, we, we got off to a shaky start. Uh, you know, they, they completed a pass on us that, you know, it was a, like a little – you know, we did just call timeout and just went over it the play before. That's what was frustrating about it. But, uh, you, you know, they, they made some plays. They made some plays and, and give them give them credit. And uh, uh, I thought Barron played really well tonight. I thought we had too many penalties. I thought we hurt ourselves, shot ourselves in the foot multiple times with penalties. And uh, – but that's part of it. I, there's no such thing as a bad win, and and uh, and uh, we'll take it. Yeah, nine penalty, or excuse me, ten penalties for 96 yards, and a few more drop passes than you'd like to see too, Jeff. Yeah, I mean, I thought we just didn't play well tonight, and 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 I'm not taking anything away from Barron. I, I thought Barron played a really good football game. Um, I, I just didn't think we we played well tonight. We had too many mental mistakes and then too many mistakes where we're just dropping the ball, blocking people on the back, behind the football. Uh, just had a lot of plays that, 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 that we just hurt ourselves. Did you feel like the focus was there to start the ball game for your ball club? I felt like the focus was there, and, and it, 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 we just didn't look like – to me, we didn't look like we looked like a tired football team. To me, I just, just didn't think we had the spark that I have seen in the first four games, and I think I think we kind of hit the wall tonight. And and I just didn't think we played very well. I didn't think we looked very fast tonight. Uh, you guys have done so much damage this year through the air, Jeff. Tonight it was the ground game. Uh, early on, you tried to use that spread formation, but it seemed like you had most of your success out of the wing tee tonight. We did, and, and you know that, and that's they were they were playing back and trying not to give up no big plays, and they were daring us to run the football, and that's what we did, and and uh, we were very successful in running the football. Yep, 183 yards uh, rushing for a total of 221 in the ball game. Got to get you to comment on Mason Arms, Jeff. We had Mason, of course. Mason uh, used to go to Barron County. He played football with a lot of these guys. He had 14 tackles tonight, according to our records. He was the player of the game. What about his defensive performance? I thought Mason played well on defense, and. Uh, you know, we our defense didn't play up to our standard that, that we want to play tonight. But individually, I thought Mason played really well. Jeff, uh, appreciate your time. We'll begin district play next week at Adair County. We'll talk to you then. Thank you. Scotty head coach Jeff Garman, his ball club winning it in double overtime tonight over the Barron County Trojans by a final score of 36 to 35. And there's Bruce. He ran off on me, on a, on me for their second there. But uh, he I, is back. I was right behind you. Oh, were you? Okay. All right. So Bruce is going to continue with our Garcia's Grill sizzling stats. Bruce. And our Don Franklin Auto final here, our Garcia's Grill, and grill sizzling stats that Joe just told you. 
with the Scotties winning in double overtime, 36 to 35. First downs, Barron with 12, Glasgow with 13. Barron rushed for 124. They threw for 158 for a total of 278. The Scotties had 183 on the ground, 38 through the air, and a total of 221. One turnover in the contest. Each team fumbled once and got it back. Barron did throw the interception. Uh, Barron County was penalized five times for 40 yards, Glasgow 10 times for 96 yards. At the halftime, I think they were both been penalized three for 30. So a big difference there in the second half. Barron County ran 61 offensive plays, consuming 26 minutes, 46 seconds. Glasgow had it for 47 plays, 21 minutes, and 14 seconds. Individually, Barron County Trojans' leading rusher was Austin Sewell tonight with 82 yards on 19 carries. He did score a touchdown, had a long of 15. Uh, Cody Kearney picked up 25 yards on six carries with a long of 10. Tate Spielman had 15 yards on 12 carries and two touchdowns with a long of 17. Braxton Carnes, four carries for three yards, and Logan uh, Truitt had one carry for a minus one. Spielman was 10 of 16, passing for 152 yards and two touchdowns. He did throw the one pick that went for a score by Jarek Martin for the Scotties. Jackson Bird, 117 yards on five catches, and he had a big catch in, in overtime to extend it. His longest was a 58 where he got uh, busted coverage and got open out in the middle. Austin Sewell had four catches for 24 yards. Cody Kearney, one catch for 13 yards. Braden Houchins punted twice for 78 yards. That's a 39-yard average. His long was 41 yards. Gavin Neal led the Scotties in rushing tonight with 60 yards on 10 carries. He scored his first touchdown of the season. He had a long of 10, 42 yards for Dalen Thomas, but Dalen had a 52-yarder called back on a hold on five carries and a touchdown, a long of 20. 34 yards for Cameron Bull on three carries with a long of 15. Easton Jesse had eight carries for 21 yards and a touchdown with a long of 14. Mason Arms carried it five times for 17 yards, and he had a score. And Rico Crowder uh, had one carry for nine yards. Easton uh, is we didn't throw near as much as we have, so that hurt him because he, he he completed three in a row, but he was just three of 12 for 38 yards tonight. Uh, Rico Crowder was his leading receiver with 18 yards on one catch. Cameron Bull had 11 yards on a catch, and Jarek Martin had nine yards on one catch. Numerous balls dropped by sure-handed receivers tonight. Uh, Kane and Allen punted two times for 52 yards, a 26-yard average with a long of 27, and his last one was a poor one on a play he got hurt. Cameron Bull came in and punted one time for 22 yards, but more importantly, the Scotties pick up a win and stay undefeated, Joe. Yes, they do, Bruce. Says a double overtime win, 36-35 over the Barron County Trojans, and we'll take one more break here on our Don Franklin Auto postgame wrap-up and come back and give you the Phillips IGA player of the game. We're back after a three-minute timeout on WCOU Sports. Hardy's two for five dollar breakfast bake goodness into your morning. Choose a biscuit with sausage and egg, biscuit and gravy, or a country fried steak biscuit. Any two, just five dollars. Hardy's goodness in the making. Get exclusive offers on the Hardy's app. Are you looking for a new career where you'll be a part of a family-owned business for over 50 years? Walbert Trucking is a trucking company based right here in Glasgow. With Walbert Trucking, you'll get full benefits, great pay, and 401k. And you'll be home daily. Unlimited possibilities await you. Apply today and become a member of the Walbert Trucking Team. 106 Sean Lane in Glasgow, 651-6784. We're not superheroes, but when people need us, we answer the call. We're not weathermen, but we know the Kentucky seasons like the back of our hands. For over 40 years, we've serviced any brand, any time, with a same-day service guarantee. Now that's a big promise, and that's probably why no one else does it. So when dealing with your heating and cooling, call HVAC Services, and you'll have the right team by your side. 
When you come into Garcia's Grill, you're welcomed with a smile and you'll love the atmosphere. Garcia's was voted by the community as the best overall restaurant for the past two years. Great food at a great value. They serve fresh, delicious, traditional Mexican dishes, incredible pasta, burgers, steaks, and seafood. People say you can never get burnt out on this restaurant because of all the amazing choices. Garcia's Grill, owned and operated by the Gomez Garcia family. Check them out on North Ray Street in Glasgow and on Facebook. Garcia's Grill, a different kind of Mexican restaurant. South Central Bank has been investing in the Glasgow community for over 50 years. During that time, we've learned a thing or two about hard work, relationships, and a vision for success. South Central Bank is designed to make a difference in the prosperity of our customers and the communities it serves. We want to be a part of your success. Visit SouthCentralBank.com. South Central Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. With a history of scoring touchdowns and breaking records, Dakota Elmore knows a thing or two about hard work. At Elmore Realty and Auction, his team, often referred to as the A-Team, applies that same work ethic in how they serve this community. With a combined 200 years of experience, the team serves our commercial industry, helps families find their dream home, and makes your auction an easy, profitable, and positive experience. Elmore Realty and Auction, trusted since 1935. Check them out on Facebook for listings and auctions. There's a new flavor in Hardy's Craft Kitchen. Nashville hot chicken. Juicy 100% white meat dipped in buttermilk, hand breaded and seasoned to bring the heat. Breakfast, lunch or dinner? New Nashville hot is goodness in the making. Back here at Glasgow's Hank Roy Stadium as we continue here on the Don Franklin Auto Post Game Wrap Up and we'll tell you that our Phillips IGA player of the game tonight for the Scotties, Mason Arms. We had Mason with 14 big tackles tonight on the defensive side. Mason also ran the ball five times for 17 yards and scored one of Glasgow's touchdowns on the evening. So Mason Arms, our Phillips IGA player of the game. Our thanks to Phillips IGA for sponsoring that feature for us here on WCLU. So our next broadcast will be next Friday night. Scotties will travel to Columbia to take on the Adair County Indians for their first district game of the season. It's a 7 o'clock kickoff time, our broadcast on the air at 6.30 on WCOD 103.1 and 14.90 a.m. Also online, WCODradio.com and the WCODU app. And, of course, uh, we plan to bring you the live video stream from Adair County next week as well as uh, – Scotty's take on Adair County in that first district game of the season. So I do want to say uh, thank you to everybody involved in our broadcast tonight. Uh, of course, our video producer, Matthew Clark, doing a great job as always. And then you had Will Perkins on uh, camera on top of the press box. You had Alea Crutcher with the field camera down there. And our man Luke Pierce back at the studio. Uh, thank him for his production work on the board tonight as well. Good to have Luke back on the board for us. So once again, the final score in double overtime. Glasgow defeats Barron County 36-35. to For Larry Alexander and Bruce Dubuque, I'm Joe Myers. Thanks for listening, everybody.